Well, I told you I haven't eaten anything today, you know? Well, that's a bad feeling. The adrenaline with not eating, I'll kill you, you know? I, uh, <laughs> uh oh. Ugh. It'll do you. <laughs> Just rip it off. Hit the oh, button. hey. Hey, everybody. This is Johnny Bean, and we are live. It's 4 09 p.m. where I am. And it's 10 past midnight where I am. Oh my gosh. Lucky wow. me. And uh, Jay Hannon, what time is it there? I'm going to say, like Thomas, it's 10 past seven here. Is that how you would say it? Yeah, yeah, I probably I probably said it totally, you know, incorrect because I, I'm the guy that puts like captions on my video and it always gets it wrong, you know, and, and everybody's like, that's wrong. But <laughs> it's seven. <laughs> yeah, 10. It, it's ten minutes past midnight in the UK. Wow. It's, it's looking black outside. It's very dark. <laughs> <laughs> As you would expect. I don't think I don't know what I was expecting there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wishing for sunshine because I tell you, in the UK right now, it's probably been the worst week. Maybe it's even longer than that. In the history, it's just been pouring it, cats and dogs, as we say, nonstop rain. It's been wet, gray, and we got like a glimpse of the sun for like three seconds today. And you could see like everybody's like, oh, is this the big day? Is this is it going to happen? Is the sun going to finally come out? But um, it hasn't came out yet. But isn't, don't you, do you really care when that happens? Isn't it like more of an excuse? Well, I just get to sit inside and play guitar all day now. Oh, it's, it's just something to talk about, you know. Oh, the, it's the weather. <laughs> it's the sun's out. <laughs> it's a nice sunny day, isn't it? It's it's very nice, yeah. And then obviously I go back in the studio and close the blinds and work on my, my real time mm -hmm. from screens. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think everybody like is like that. Everybody wants what they, they don't have, right? So it's like when it's hot. It's like I wish it was cold. And when it's yeah. cold, you want the heat. Yep. Uh, yeah. Grass is always greener. Exactly. But is it really? Yeah. Hey, oh. mm. This mm. is deep already. Yeah, we're. <laughs> <laughs> so how long has it been anyway since I was last? It it, just, it doesn't seem like that long, but I. That's probably just me. Was I would I would say it's been ten months. Probably. I want to say there, you right? were here last August. Okay. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds about I, right. I remember you were here on a Saturday, and then that Monday I left for, for a road trip to Texas. Oh. So. Very good. A successful yeah. road trip? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And it was hot, man. It was hot there. Damn weather popping its head up again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah. David Nesdal is here. Yes. There he is. Hello, David. Look at that. We were just catching up about that uh, a beautiful new guitar of his snake skin. Snake Real skin. snake skin. Real. Oh. Smells good too. Oh really? <laughs> you know, it looked like it almost has like a roasted neck. It, what what is the neck on it? It's it's maple. It's just beat up and dirty. But the fret there's no fretware, which is yeah. beyond me. It, it was it was basically the owner of the guitar kept it uh, I guess next to his uh, chair. Uh, next to the fireplace, and it would be his fireplace guitar. You know, he'd sit back and play at mm -hmm. night. But he's uh, he, the the gentleman that owned this uh, has probably the largest collection of ESP guitars, we, uh, uh, all custom shop from the 80s and 90s. Uh, some of them wow. owned by George Lynch. Some of them played by George Lynch. You know, there and most of them all George Lynch guitars. Right, um, that's pretty cool. Then, so. and he had to get rid of a couple of them. And I, when this one came up, I said, "I'll take that." Yeah, no, but I bet he's super glad that it went to a good home as well. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're we're gonna have him on here in the near future as well oh, to show nice. off his guitars. So, yeah, very cool. Yeah, well, it, it looks great. It looks really cool. Thanks. It's very heavy. It's probably about oh, really? about eleven pounds. Oh man, it's a, it's a maple body, so. Oh, okay, so with the like maple, it's is that supposed to be like a brighter sounding? Yeah, tone? it's bright, but with the snakeskin covering it, it kind of it kind of tones it down, so it it brings it back to normal. Gotcha, right? Very oh, cool. Is that real snakeskin or is that trouser snakeskin? <laughs> it's uh, real. Uh, yeah, it's real it's trouser. Real trouser snake real skin. Tr <laughs> 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 You know, wow. the, trouser, the trouser snake uh, lives right near the Naga. 
you know, up, oh, in the, up, in the, up in the great Northwest where the Naga lives. Naga hide. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Nice. Is anybody so, doing a roll call tonight? Yeah. Or are we skipping it? Well, first of all, Jay Hannon, welcome. Oh, I thought you said hi to me before. Hi. No. Yeah, no. He, we did. You did right after Thomas. Yeah. I don't know. We got right into it. I, yeah, I know. Straight in. No messing around. <laughs> that that was worth <laughs> 16 <laughs> thumbs ups, too. No, no foreplay. It's right in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good first set. <laughs> oh well everybody's good it's i mean it's been a while since i've seen you and you're all you're all well you're looking good everybody's looking ready for the summer yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm gonna mm -hmm. have to bust out my um hulk hogan cut off shirt my red striped pants uh, and do another uh and McRocklin, an eggplant? McRocklin fake playthrough because i can't play any of that stuff so i just gotta <laughs> pretend you know that was still one of my favorite videos that i've ever seen probably online ever i remember when you posted it I was like, it was really late in the UK as well. And I had to, oh man, it was just, you know, when you watch something like 10 times and you still haven't had enough of it. And then it's like, oh, I need to, I need to edit and post this. It's well, a legendary I, video. I, I can't begin to tell you how weak I am. And those guitars, <laughs> they're not like, you know, they're not heavy guitars, but they're not light guitars either. And yeah, yeah. when I was pumping iron, Yes, I, man. We probably did like four or five takes, and my wife was, you know, scanning back and forth, and she's like, "How's that one?" I was like, "I can't lift these things anymore. That, that whatever that take was, it's fine. Just leave." Not it. one. Burning, man. Yeah, very. It was worth it, though. It's worth it. It was. It was. So, are you going to do the the next video with or without eggplant? You know. Wait a minute. Was eggplant? I had a lot of people now, that's not the, that's not the best video I've ever saw. Now the, the truth's out. <laughs> <laughs> that's no longer the best video. <laughs> hey, when anybody asked what was in my pants, I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? You're, you're just happy. You're just happy to be lifting those guitars. Uh, oh, that's so funny. That's what Thomas's music makes me do, man, you know? <laughs> put tight clothes on and... Uh... Makes you vegan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Who wants to do a roll call real quick? Go ahead, Jay. You're I good did at last. that. Didn't I but do you're good time. at it. All right. Now I'm, I'm drinking coffee, so I'll just fly through. Nightbot, R2, R3, Locking Nut. Joe Hurt. I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. Um, R2, R3, Locking Nut. How you doing? Joe Hervey, 84. John Parson Project. You like that? John Parson. Uh, real quick. John Parson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right? I hope that's the right guy. Yes. Yeah. I just we Dude, did like we we, we, we did right. like we did like an hour long test call with Thomas, which actually could have been the show. It was awesome. I I run down to the PO box and I got this mystery Amazon package. Speaking of packages, <laughs> and uh, so I, I opened it up and it said, uh, "Happy birthday, Johnny! Hope you enjoy the headphones, John Parson. Thank you so much, man. I, I'll be trying these out as soon as we're done." Thank does, you so much. Does John work with Beer Dynamic, or, do, or does he work with Amazon? Or is he just uh, a very generous friend of yours? I think I I, I think it's just uh, it's it's a birthday gift. Oh, wow, God. very cool, very cool. What a what a what a considerate man. Yeah, yeah Beer Dynamic nice headphones for the birthday. Wait, 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 when was your birthday? Sorry, I missed that. It was it was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> In the UK, it's your birthday. Because oh, yeah, oh. it is. So you can wish him a happy birthday then, Tom. No, you I'm still gonna, have time to I'm get him a key. Play you happy, I'm going to have to play you happy birthday. I've never oh. played happy birthday in my life, but I'm going to have to now. And I'm going to have to play it on high gain because. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, the microphone. Oh, yes. You'll have to move the microphone to get the game. Okay. Are we back? Ooh, I'm just clang clanging a certain guitar that probably doesn't want to be clanged. <laughs> I <will> love it. <laughs> okay. Oh, pressure's on now. Damn. Um, okay, we're going to go in A. A little bit of improv there. <laughs> Uh, 
Awesome. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you so much, man. Very nice. <laughs> and and Johnny, uh, just so you know, that Kiesel guitar that he's holding in his hands, that's your new gift. There oh, we go. I'm, I'm, I'm warming it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Yo, have a good day, man. Thank you, man. Right. Yeah, yeah. It might have to be like a birthday weekend. Maybe the birthday's starting now, you know? Uh, well. Right now until Sunday night. Damn. You know, because well, fr- David Nesdal, he, he likes to do a birthday week. <laughs> I do. When it's my birthday, I do a birthday week. I, I like I like birthdays, period, whether it's mine or anyone else's. And I think it should be celebrated for longer than 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So does that mean uh, birthday cake uh, every day? No, no, I'm <laughs> diabetic. You want me to kill myself? That's why. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> too many, too many week long birthdays of seven days in a row eating. Yeah, cake. done. It's, He's dead. No, no, I don't do that. <laughs> oh man. Um, there's so already a question for you uh, from Brian Davies, Thomas. He says, uh, "How is Team Sunderland? Or how are they going to do this year?" Okay, so um, football is definitely not my thing, um, but Sunderland and Newcastle, there's always like this rivalry, and Sunderland is like 20 minutes drive or so from Newcastle where I am. But um, that all said, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of people coming in, and, and I see people with their head in their hands because you know some teams have fallen out of Premier League and went to another league. And I'm like, okay, I, I just don't, I, I don't follow it. Me neither. I, I actually know what I really follow is like the, uh, is basketball. And I, um, I, I missed every single NBA finals. And did I, did I read it right? Like did the Toronto Raptors win? Yeah. Um, the Drake curse is over. Wow. If anybody doesn't know what that is. Well, uh, this yeah, I, I like. I hardly. That's not me, is it? No, it's me. I'm. I'm. Ch- I'm shutting it off. Oh, <laughs> <I'm thinking. laughs> I've changed machines recently. I'm getting so many notifications from everywhere, and I'm like still getting the odd like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's it's me. It's it's one of our it's one of our listeners that uh, just bought a, a new Wolfgang, a PV Wolfgang. For, it's new for him. Very nice. Uh, he, Very wanted, nice. he sent me pictures of it, and uh, I think he ben still thinks ben. we're on at eight. <laughs> right there. there we go so yeah ben oh so that's right our raptors took the title so ben is a raptors fan um yeah was vince carter on the raptors early days i or have no raptors? idea ever since uh jordan retired i completely just i have no interest that's in it. basketball anymore plus i suck at it so yeah I, 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 it was the only sport I played. It, it was like not in this house, but my previous house. The first thing I built in that house was a half court. And really? That, uh, I was so hmm. obsessed. I mean, I was playing like when I stopped playing guitar, first time around, you know, like 16, 17 or so, I was playing like eight to 10 hours a day of basketball. So I was like obsessed. I was walking around with like 10 kgs strapped to each leg, training hard, just jumping. Um, and wow. in my mind, when I was going to Venice Beach, I was going to join the NBA. Never a chance in hell, you know, just the wrong, the wrong <laughs> build, not the connections. Never going to happen. But in my mind, for a little while, I, I was going to be like, you know, maybe it's not the Lakers, you know, at that time, maybe it's the Clippers or something. But um, yeah, d- delusional. And were you able to dunk when you were at your? I uh, was. It was my biggest achievement because i'm like five nine five ten maximum Whoa. so i had like um i think it's like a 46 or a 47 inch vertical it just enough to i couldn't dunk in a game I, I was you know like ball handling and you know threes were like that was my thing and it was like pretty high percentage from outside but um but practicing at home and warming up warming up and stuff like that yes hmm. could dunk damn um but yeah it's it's so it's it's t- for somebody of my size that don't and to maintain that it just it's really like it's quite difficult because you just have to train so hard all the time and i had like a few fractures and stuff and um 
once you fracture your ankle it takes so long to kind of get back to the same strength and to have the um the vertical power to get up it's like difficult mm -hmm. so in my last house i was like not really interested i just had like a basketball return system so you just stand outside and just shoot threes all day and the balls come back to you put some music on put some two-pack on you know <laughs> great days <laughs> wow awesome awesome that's, that's a cool. great story yeah yeah that, that that's the obsessive personality you know it's it shows its head now and again it's like basketball coffee was a thing video games video games yeah i got a professional gaming for um a good few years so and, uh, speaking of the comp uh the compulsive i guess uh or obsessive personality are you afraid is any part of your brain thinking like i better not do anything else otherwise i'm going to stop playing guitar again do you ever think about that yeah yeah no definitely like now i won't let myself load steam or any of my games um because you know i'm steam is a platform that i typically used to play counter-strike on mm -hmm. and um i mean i used to play like counter-strike when i was like you know in large clans and stuff like all night you know from like six seven at night through to early hours in the morning and it was just like crazy um and that that's the obsessive personality definitely come through so now you know i, I think oh new machine new computer let's see what the frame rate's like you know <laughs> let's get fired up and i'm like no and the you know sometimes i buy like wireless mouse because i'm so you know i mean i have like my other rig is like low latency screen you know gaming specific hardware you know in this machine i'm like right we're gonna get stuff that doesn't um encourage gaming at all and you know because it's like it's also it's like you have that um obsessive nature but i also have a really really kind of competitive nature and like the type of you know attitude comes like you won't be happy until you're literally clearing out the server because everybody's calling you a hacker <laughs> and it has to be that way you know you need to piss people and often infuriate these people um and that's just the best feeling being called a wow. hacker Ah, yeah. so, so does that does that kind of um, show its face in playing guitar as well? Like, do you see other guitar players, and does that kind of drive you as well? Seeing somebody that's like, "Holy shit, look what they're doing!" Funny enough, not as much. Um, I can appreciate guitar players a lot more, um, and don't have that side of me flare up that often. Um, You're already better than all of them. Is that? <laughs> no, I don't think. So. <laughs> already cleared out this whole level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 right no um uh, no it, it's funny because it doesn't i think i can appreciate it, and there's some amazing guitar players around these days mm -hmm. i think i'm probably if anything more grateful that there is so much talent emerging on the guitar scene you know if even if you look at on instagram alone um the kind of level you can see there is like pretty crazy um compared to like back in the day where you know instrumental Excuse me, guitar player was like limited in the mainstream to a very small select few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now and again, it does, you know, and I have to make some silly videos to. <laughs> yeah. We love those silly videos. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I know all about the video game thing, man. I was, I, I was hooked into that for a number what? of years. And what was your thing? What was your game? Oh, I was into uh, Call of He's Duty. Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it was called uh, Fro Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a cod guy. <laughs> yeah, I was into, into that for a while. But I moved, and every, mm -hmm. time we, every time we would move house, you know, my games would disappear. Mm. I, I would lose them. Okay. And so, or, so, or was it somebody, like, realizing this guy's got a problem, we need to get this? Yeah, I think it was my wife. I, yeah. I think she would find the games and like throw them in the trash. Yeah. And so I'd set up the computer in the new place. All right, let's get back to that game. Wait, that it's that gone. Disc is gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Spe speaking about really good guitar players, we uh, Cameron Brown is in the chat, and Cameron. Uh, yep. Cam, Cammy. Yeah. Oh my God, what a great guitar player he is, huh? Very good. Very good. Yeah. Cool dude too, man. 
He's a mm -hmm. um, he's a terrible car driver as well. I don't know if you know. Um, Cameron's been known to uh, crash his car a lot in car parks, trying <laughs> um, silly things. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a supermarket over here um, called Asda, and another one called Tesco, and he's um, he's been arrested two times in each car park just trying to park his car. <laughs> Wait, so, you guys uh, live near each other? <laughs> no, uh, it, it's you know the UK and Scotland's not that far away, and he's he's made the news a few times. Oh, it's, oh yeah, very terrible, funny, terrible driver. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> that's because he puts all his time into playing guitar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's I'm just so kidding. Funny. I didn't see Cammy on the news crashing cars, but I don't know why. But it's like a few times I've um, he's either joined my live. And it, it, he's been in the car, and it looks like he's outside of a supermarket. Maybe he's getting ready to bust the place, you know, steal from <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Uh, uh, so. Hey, Cameron. Every time, every time I talk to Cameron, he's driving. So maybe he should stop talking to people when he's driving and drive. Yeah, man. You're going to get arrested for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So tell us a little bit about that guitar in your hands. This guitar, my favorite right now. <laughs> um, this guitar came as a surprise uh, from Mr. Jeff Kiesel. Um, so I didn't know anything about it before he sent it. He's like, I'm going to send you this out. Um, and basically what, what he did was he took all my sort of favorite spec that I have uh, in my other Kiesels. Um, so a light piece of ash, um, the Toast and Abasi Fishman Fluence pickups, wired with a five-way super switch, um and this was um sent just as they started roasting necks and you know not just using like um color treated boards but actually roasting for the first time um which is great because i i kind of tried some other guitars with roasted necks and i was like i just kind of wished like kiesel would actually offer that so it was like the perfect timing and um and it's got a really cool like a 5a flame maple neck so it looks like it's just got tiger striping really cool so he sent this out and, um, and then he called me like the next day and he was like, oh, did you get a guitar? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it turns oh, out he actually oh, built you send another one. Yeah, it just turned up. Um, but he actually built um, a whole bunch of them. Um, and then we um, we offered it um, for sale, for purchase and um, sold, sold out in like 18 hours or so. Um, so we were both like really surprised. Man. Wow. Um, and then we start, uh, he, he graciously offered to build a bunch more for everybody that kind of, uh, didn't get the chance to order it. Um, and now I'm seeing them like dotted all over on Instagram. It's like, it's like really, really cool because people are playing exactly the same guitar that, that I'm playing. So it was great to see, you know, and it was also great to see that so many people, you know, took to it, um, you know, with no hesitation that just bang got their cards out and bought it you know so it was great but it's a fantastic guitar um really really like it just plays so good love it so so at no point after you got it and jeff was like we're gonna make a bunch of these or i already made a bunch of them we're gonna sell them were you like wait a minute i want this to be my own personal thing everyone's gonna be playing mm -hmm. these things now because i know after you got the original one Mm -hmm. um the blue one of the uh aquas what's the yeah the trans aqua one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Aqua. everybody all of a sudden everybody had to have one of those yeah, yeah. that's that guy yeah <laughs> um yeah i don't know no i didn't really have that feeling um because at the end of the day i mean kiesel essentially is just like you know is a, a custom shop so um i've even seen like the the purple one like a bunch of times where people have kind of taken the inspiration and kind of just went and ordered you know that um and you know they'll put their own spin on it and stuff and that's uh, that's kind of the cool thing i think with kiesel is like you can take something you know like that and say well actually i want an ebony neck i, I don't want the, the maple you know you can kind of do what you want um so everybody can kind of have exactly what they want anyway um but it was still cool, like everybody, you know, gets to get the exact same spec that I've been playing, you know, especially in the comments of the Instagram videos, you know, it's like it's a it's a sort of theme, you know, just people love the sound and the tones and stuff. And you know, obviously a lot of it, it's like the you know, the gear I'm using, but a lot of it comes down to the, the guitars and pickups and stuff as well. So it was it's just a cool thing. So yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's great. Hey, exploring ginger, welcome. Mm. Yeah, the chat, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat. It's, it seems like it's uh, it's, it's rolling. Around. It is rolling. It's it's moving. Yeah. And if you guys if you guys have a question or comment for Thomas, you can tag him, and that way it'll turn orange for him, and he'll be able to see it. And uh, or Jay or Dave or even Johnny or Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna try and sell my uh, send myself. Uh, I see there's a dollar symbol, so um, I'm gonna send myself a hundred dollars on there. <laughs> no, that's not working. Well, you only get about what six bucks out of that hundred. I think. Uh, what does Google take? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They take they take way, way, way uh, too much of it. Okay, fair um, enough. They take but, and they uh, take. Yeah, and actually, I just saw as I started this, a little screen popped up telling me that Google Hangouts is going away soon. Uh, Whoa! It was the well, first time I seen that. That's Google, though. You know, they they um, you know, how many times have they built a product and dropped it? You know, if you look at like Google Plus before Google Plus, it was Google Wave, uh, which was like another social platform that never took off. Yeah, took off of that. They, I remember all they, that. Yeah. They build and drop and build and drop. Um, and even Google Play Music is like being really, um, it's on its back legs before it kind of goes all in on YouTube music. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. wasn't there Google Buzz too? Yeah, that's another one. You know, and it's crazy because I, I also got really, really into Android, which is obviously uh, for a long time being owned by Google, um, but they, they use the bare minimum of like the um, OEM sort of version of Android now, but still I was using a lot of Google services. So got to see firsthand like things just come and go a lot from the earlier days of um, Android. So, um, you know, they do some amazing things, but um, they do some uh, ridiculous things as well. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. What about um, Google Fiber? Remember that was going to be their internet. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I heard that they're going to be yeah. dropping that too or something. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, what was the thing that they did with the balloons? That uh, is that still going? Did you hear about that? What? In ru rural er rural areas of like the world, they were literally putting balloons up with like cells, so you could get like four and five, well, four G uh, data. You know, I mean, it's not just like one balloon. It was like literally thousands of these balloons going up over like certain parts of the world. Wow. Uh, yeah. But then. I mean, Google is, uh, I mean, they're, they're gigantic. They're like um, owned by uh, their uh, parent company is like called Alphabet. Hmm. Yeah. And Alphabet owns Google, I mean, but Google themselves. Um, like Google does so many products, you know, from like, you know, healthcare to obviously, you know, internet web services to own and platforms. So Google got so big that they they themselves made this parent company called Alphabet, and then Alphabet owned Google. But now Alphabet has all these different things. You know, like that's not related to Google because if Google start doing like all these random other things, people like the probably the shareholders would be like, "What the hell?" Mm. It's yeah, it's all very interesting. Mm. Mm. A sixty four T bird asked me a question, but I'm going to ask the whole panel this question. Uh, he says, uh, Dave, before you perform, do you get nervous? So I'm going to ask the whole panel that question, and we can all answer it. Thomas, you first. Um, what I get um, is adrenaline. And what, what the kind of adrenaline is, it's the type of adrenaline that can easily turn into nerves very, very quickly. So I, I don't like, I mean, I, I feel like comfortable playing in front of people, but I remember when I first, first started playing again, like, you know, after taking a long break and then start doing like Instagram lives. And I remember the first two or three times I was going live and plonking the phone down. I was like, you know, like you, you probably know a lot of people have like the guitar store syndrome where like they go to play and you'll be practicing at home and have all these amazing licks. You go to a guitar store and it just goes woof. And you you like you you know, you you lick vocabulary is just like super, just like very yeah. like, everything's gone out the window, you know. Um, so you know, I, I'm really um 
cautious not to let that type of nerve, you know, take place, you know, and kind of stick to my guns a little bit, you know, and I think just having confidence is in yourself and not worrying too much, you know, like for me, obviously a lot of things that I play are like always on the edge of something can go wrong because you're pushing things a lot, you know, and for me, it's like, I accept that I can make a mistake and I don't, don't really care if I make a mistake because at the end of the day, you're playing a guitar, you're going to make a mistake at some point. So it doesn't matter if it's in front of one people, a thousand people or whatever, you know? So I think once you accept that it's all right to make a mistake and not worry about it and tr try and, you know, recognize those nerves, um, then you can keep them all at bay. So in short, I don't get nervous, but you do, I do get that kind of extra adrenaline, you know, where you just get a little bit hyped up, you know. And I think that's probably a, a normal thing, but it's never um, something that would kind of throw me off guard and, you know, kind of everything I've practiced or learned has kind of gone out the window or anything like that. But when that first note hits, does everything change and you're just like, I'm fine? Yeah, yeah, generally so. Mm -hmm generally so i remember one weird like situation was like when i a couple of uh i think it was a 2017 nam show when i played at fishman and um I, I emailed my fractal patches over to the exa and then like it was 10 minutes before i was due to play and i loaded the fractal patches up and none of my patches had the impulse responses so it just sounded like absolutely awful it sounded like you we were playing through a loud phone it was like <laughs> Hey guys, listen to this. Listen, Thomas is playing. Yeah, it, and I remember looking over, and Tosin was there. Oh you know, fuck, God, Jesus, you know. <laughs> and then there's more and more people coming up, and like the you know the guys are, hey, Thomas is on in a minute, and I'm like frantically like, Where, where's my patches? Where's my sounds? Um, and then I got one IR to load, and I quickly resaved it across all the patches, and it was like it was fine, you know, and then. And then it was live and then you know every you know yeah, everything worked out you know but but uh yeah that that could have been uh <laughs> yeah but that i mean that's that's when something goes drastically wrong i mean you yeah. have the right to be nervous and, and scared and, and all that stuff yeah but you know during during a regular show everything is going okay you know your your guitar is, is your guitar is perfect your, your amp your rig is great uh, yeah, you have a cool crowd. The band, you know, the band is going to sound good. Yeah, you know, the, all that's left is the playing, and that's it. So yeah, yeah, no, no. In that situation, no, never. You know, it's it's all just about the fun and uh, you know just having a blast. And I think, you know, um, just having that two two way thing with the audience is always fun. You know, even though I haven't done that many gigs uh, this time around since I've been playing, um, I still remember. You know gigging a lot and playing in front of people a lot and uh, it's a great uh great feeling to kind of connect and stuff you know yeah sure jay how about you um i mean it's been a while since i've uh played I've, it's been a while for i think johnny has played uh more recently than any of us gigs mm -hmm. well, gig wise so it's going to be a while for all of us so mine was probably 2007 i think was my last time I played live, but no, it was always the same thing. You know, you get just that nervous energy, like excitement. Um, you know, I was always prepared as far as what I knew I had to play. Um, but you know, for a while there, I would, uh, drink like two Bud Lights before just to kind of ease the nerves. Don't do anything overboard where you're not going to be able to play. Mm -hmm. Um, that always seemed to help a little bit, gets you kind of just like in that I'm fine mood. Like I don't, you know, nothing, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, once, you know, once the, um, once that first note hit, like I said before, it was just, you almost get, I almost used to get like tunnel vision. Like, um, it's hard to explain, but you just don't see everything as clearly outside of what you're looking at. That's how it, what it always did to me. But once that first note hit, you were like, I was locked in on whatever. You almost don't hear anything, but you you feel everything it's it's a completely different yeah. thing you know and then you look after the show is over you're like i barely remember what the hell happened up there <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah that's that's the thing when you're doing when you're on a, a bill with a lot of bands and you're you only have a half an hour to 45 minute set it's over before you even think about it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of shows, you know, you get five minutes to set up while you're waiting for the other band that's taking pictures with their buddies after they're set. And you're like, guys, we, we got to get our shit on here before, you know. And next thing you know, the curtain comes up and you're like, plug in. Okay, we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of shows that are over quickly, I remember an early Bad for Good gig. Um, and this was when... Um, Oh gosh, I mean it was probably very very shortly after the Refugee album came out and um we had like a 45 to 50 minute set but young guys nerves must have been like cranked and the set was over in about 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> wow. And then somebody taped it and then like even the slow ballad tracks like there's two of them were like almost like punk tracks you know just so <laughs> flat it was like whoa so um uh, we, we're gonna blame that on brooks wackerman though because you know he was the guy that used to count everything in hmm. he's with a gen sevenfold now so you know would he's the songs right. like start at the good tempo and then just gradually like yeah. <laughs> take off uh fast well no i i think it just started very fast from the be from the beginning you know yeah wow yeah which was yeah. fun because when it got to tire kick in my instrumental sort of shreddy sort of track um i was like this just feels a little bit different to normal but uh we'll get through it well th yeah that that's happened too i mean think about you know some of the solos um they're hard enough at album speed and then when you throw the human element of like live playing and things bump up a few bpm even if you have a, a good drummer that's as far as their timing wise live yeah but when you get some of these guys that are like adding 10 D or 10 D 10 uh, BPM to a yeah. 15 and you're like, holy crap, I can't play this that fast. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. So um, got to over prepare for those nasty drummers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looking back. What are you nuts? <laughs> yeah. You idiot. <laughs> So Johnny, what about you? I, I you know, I, I'd ask you the question, but you probably have forgotten it already. Mm -hmm. What? What size pants are you wearing? Huh? <laughs> what? How big am I? Was that <laughs> this Thomas's big. microphone? <laughs> um, I and actually same color too. I actually, <laughs> I actually get more nervous about trying to find parking before a gig. That's my one. That's the biggest thing. Like if I if I have to go into the city, if I have to go into San Francisco or whatever, that's the one thing. It's always you know hurry up and wait. You know you got to get there. You got to park, like that train. You know <laughs> where is that coming from? <laughs> I gotta catch that train. It's over here. I have the train about a hundred <laughs> yards off my house, uh, <laughs> on your roof. <laughs> So wait, um, so it's it, everything in uh, where you're like, where you're talking about as far as the city, like everything's a tollway zone and you, there's literally no place to park anywhere and you have to park there's, somewhere. There's no parking anywhere. Yeah. No. That's like that in New York City too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the biggest thing I get nervous about uh, as far as, as before I go on or whatever. If I'm with a band, I'm fine. No problem. If it's just me, like if I have to do some sort of solo something or other. I, I can be I can be a, a mess, you know. I think like everyone. I mean, because everyone's got their eyes on you, and only you, because you're yeah. the only person. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. It's much easier to do it on these things. Like we got 64 watching right now. You know, hey everybody, <laughs> I can do yeah. that here. If I had 64 people all watching me, you know, in person, if I had my guitar, I'd be fine. If I just had to speak, I'd I'd be, you know, yeah. dropping yeah. shots nonstop. But you know what that looked like, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to say anything. Oh, it's not Tuesday, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez. I think the only way really to get over this is just to mime everything from now on um, and not worry about it. That's right. Well, I think a lot of bands are starting to do that. Um, I had a buddy call me from a band who played a gig um, a couple weeks ago when there was two or three other bands on the bill. And one of these bands was like, super duper heavy just like you know eight string guitars just you know yeah, yeah and he was telling me that they had backing tracks an extra rhythm guitar behind everything they had vocals just pumping in like everywhere sweeping it all up and he was like i don't he's like i don't understand why they just 
you know, it's almost like it's almost accepted even in that stuff. And I could see maybe um, like pumping in some backing vocals here and there. If you have like a three part harmony and you got two sing, I don't know. I'm just, it's just weird how it's, it's gotten to this point where 30 years ago, Millie Vanilli was basically destroyed. For lip to say, yeah. And now pop music, that's all they do. And now it's leaking into like heavy metal, like heavy, heavy metal where I don't think the crowd is really expecting to hear the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want, they want the live interpretation of it. Yeah. I, I think it's just entertainment in general. Yeah. You know? Because oh. when you watch that Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, all that stuff is, is pumped in. No, None I know, but, but isn't live. rock and roll supposed to be live? Live and raw right. and just, hey, this is it, man. I um, think yeah. it's just I mean, like um, David Lee Roth and stuff like Maybe he's 88 or so, 89, 80, yeah, 80, yeah, you know, kind of late 80s. And um, <laughs> it was just, you know, even though I was like a young kid, just hearing the live version of the tracks and, you know, Vi was improv and it was different, you know, the keyboard parts were like, you know, it was, it was the same tracks, but it was a different experience, you know, and obviously Roth was jumping around like a lunatic. So, you know, that was, you know, thing, but it was just like, you know, so awesome though. You know that that was the tour of the way they had like the boxing ring out and stuff like that, and you know the, <laughs> the surf, and it was just like ah, so good. See, like, and I love that stuff. I absolutely love when when the live, uh, the live show is a little different than the record because it, you're getting you're now you're getting double your money because the record is always going to be the record, and it's a different performance when you see it live. It's slightly different. It's like two yeah. different records, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely maybe a lost art, you know. Maybe it's, you know people um, the improv side of things. Maybe it's uh, faded out. People want to just kind of just give the album version as close as possible. And uh, I don't know. Well, I, th I think there's a fine line for that. Is like some. I think there's a lot of things when you listen to it on an album that are like signature parts. Of yeah, the song. You've like, if you like, if you don't hear that, you know, if there's a yeah. drum fill that kind of like, you know, going from the bridge back into the chorus or something, and it's like a yeah. huge drum fill, they're like, and then they don't do it. You're like, oh, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, <laughs> I have a great uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, example of of it going the other way. Now, the song Unchained, Van Halen. The guitar solo in that song, it's a great solo. Of course, they're all great, but it's, you know, it, it's a solo that you hear all the time. You can hum it, really. And that Oakland 81 show that we all love where Dave says, everybody up, mm -hmm. that solo, not even one note is the same as the record. And I think that's a cooler solo than the one on the record. There we go. Yeah. Happy, mm -hmm. happy surprise. Happy accident. Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh oh, absolute mayhem. Quick, someone call the police. Someone stole all the headstocks. I was <laughs> laughing at that comment as well. <laughs> I was laughing. How many hey, times have you heard that, man? Some guitars with heads on. Yeah, there's a couple of guitars in that room with, with headstocks on them. Yeah, three, let me three, I think. So, <clears throat> what we got? What we got? Wow, I so got a DC, DC recently. This is cool. My, I uh, believe it or not, this is the first Nex Rue guitar that I ever, ever have ever owned. Um, pretty cool though. Um, the, the join on it. Oh, can we see? Oh, uh, you yeah, lift it up higher. There we go. That's it. That looks great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Wow. that. That looks very similar to your Phantom guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a pretty okay. solid guitar, but it's like a really nice flame maple top. Um, when you catch it in the light and stuff, and it's um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, I just wanted this to be like a workhorse because, you know, locking tuners, strings, poof, straight through the body, really kind of easy to deal with if you're kind of just tracking guitars and... It's got the um, Kiesel Polarity pickups in there, which sound um, really cool as well. Um, but yeah, it'll just be something different, but it does have a head on there. So, 
So I haven't, I haven't played this one in a while, but let me let me give it a tune up. It's another thing, obviously just traditional straight through. If you're just tracking a bunch of paths and you want to You don't want to get something down in a hurry. Put the octave on as well, so. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it feels really, it's just cool. Nice. Sick back you know as the other ones ash body underneath the flame maple tar thin profile went for slightly different um medium jumbo uh frets on here but uh cool <laughs> Cool guitar, though. Yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> there's clean and then there's clean. <laughs> as far as playing, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I can't, I, my thing is with playing, it's like I never want to put anything in, you know, and I haven't really played today because I've been just making weird, weird guitar videos today, but really kind of like bitty kind of bit sort of thing you know like start stop start stop but um but yeah i kind of if i if i do something i'll always like leave it out until it's reached a point where i can put it in as like second nature sort of thing you know if that if that makes sense you know mm -hmm. that's why now is that an acoustic guitar with a with a trem no trem let me uh <laughs> put the acoustic sound but it's really cool i mean basically this this guy um, I wanted to have something that sounded like an acoustic. You just plug it in, and wow. um, it's just like great. It's like again, super easy because there's the, there's no trim. It's string straight through, and um, it sounds like an acoustic. It's like you record a track with it, or for me, sometimes just even do like a quick Instagram video. It's like instant, just really cool tone. I mean, you can maybe hear it a little bit through the speakers if I uh, turn around. So. God, that sounds good. <laughs> And it's got 24, 24 frets so right up the top. You just got that access in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing! What a great sounding guitar. It, it doesn't doesn't hurt to have your hands though. <laughs> well, you know what I was just thinking about. Remember in in Matrix when uh, they upload stuff into Neo, he's like, "I know kung fu." <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, it was like upload. I can play like Thomas McCrockley. Like that's that's what. It was. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, what well, what did we just see there? What I I just saw something flash on that looked very flashy. Something uploaded into my brain. No, a, a cool guitar. Oh. No. Where oh, am I seeing yeah. that? Here we go. Dave. Whoa. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Look at that. Is that new? What is that? It's a 2010 uh, Gem Floral 2. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it when it comes from Ibanez, it comes with these with black pickups and black knobs. And, I, and I'm thinking, what's wrong with these people? Because a Gem guitar should be flashy. Yeah. So, and, and it has red in the guitar. So, I, you know... Red wow. knobs, red pickups, red switch tip. It even has red in the in the uh, in the vine. Okay. Yeah, really cute. So, Very nice. So why not a set of you know red Demarzio evolutions? 
And you've got a carbon trim on that as well. I've, got, like a car, I've got a carbon trim on all of my uh, gems. Yeah. You like it? Absolutely love it. And it doesn't move. It, it just stays. It, you know how like the, the normal edge arm, yeah. it, you know, gets flaccid. Very, boop, boop, yeah, boop, yeah, boop, yeah. Boop. This doesn't. Yeah. And no, it's, it's, it's very light. It's very lightweight. Say, it's, it's kind of weird when you first pick those up because it's like there's literally there's no weight at all. Is it so light? Yeah. And, you know, and it helps the trim. It really does because yeah. this guitar didn't want to the, – the, the trim didn't want to really flutter very much. But with yeah. this thing, it's crazy. It doesn't yeah. stop. It doesn't nice. – it just doesn't it, – it's great. Beautiful. Looks really nice. Really cool guitar. I figured you'd like that. I figured I'd show off some of my gem guitars for you and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you'd get a kick out of them, so. No, um, the, the floral too. I, I never really saw many of those like in the flesh. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I also was like one of the sort of rare ones you'd see, but um, that's a great example of, of one, and it looks um, looks really nice, very pretty. Very much, and this one happens to be very lightweight. Oh, really? It's uh, maybe six and a half pounds. Oh wow, that is light. Gems, gems are usually in the eight pound range around mm -hmm. there. This is very light. Good, good guitar. Very, Very good cool. feeling guitar. Mm. I'm, I'm just like, there's some funny comments coming in. A beautiful gem, but McRocklin can beat that, lol. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> who said that? Man, <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, of course he can. I mean, you know, he's he's got some, he's got, well, first of all, all of his guitars are celebrity owned because he's a celebrity. But he's got some guitars owned by some pretty big hitters or a big, pretty big hitter. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course. That's funny. No, but that, that looks honestly genuinely stunning. Really cool guitar. So I'm sure we'll keep it for a long time. Oh, yeah. Well, pretty much everything that everything that's in the rack right in front of me is staying, not, not going anywhere. You know, things, yeah. things behind me may or may not go someplace, but yeah. these are all staying. Awesome, man. Just reading those comments as well. Feels so good to play. I haven't played like all day properly. Yeah, properly. So. The string gauge on that guitar is it? Are they the, your normal string gauge, or are they more acoustic strings? They're acoustics, they're like bronze, yeah. So, um, I, I think they're twelves. Um, but I'm probably gonna go one step lighter. Um, so I, I, I work a lot with uh, Daddario, and I've got like a a locker and at Kiesel, and it's filled with different strings. And I can't remember what acoustic gauge I sent. So it's these feel like 12. So when I'm trying doing some faster stuff, you know, it's like it's a little bit of work, but I think it could be a little bit easier if I drop it down a gauge, you know, because I'm not going to be using it to like strum stuff. I'm going to be using this guitar to like double up electric parts a lot, just mm -hmm. add another texture and stuff. So, you know, it's like I don't want to make it harder. I mean, it actually is a good guitar just to pick up and practice because. You know, if it's like 12s on a um, uh, headless, you know, it's like it's a, there's a bit of tension on those strings, you know. Absolutely. But, um, but it's acoustic strings. It's uh, the, the, the Daddario EXP coated strings. So. Now, but, do they, does Kiesel make a, a nylon string headless guitar? Ooh, not that I've seen. Um, Maybe you should uh, talk to him about that because that would be great to record with. Great to, to double tracks with. Yeah, it would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's, uh, I don't know. I mean, it would probably just be a bridge change, I guess. It wouldn't require much. So, um, yeah. Well, they make ball-ended They make ball ended nylon strings, so it wouldn't be tough to do. Right. 
gotcha gotcha um yeah i, I don't know what if, if the pickups maybe would be a thing but yeah it would be a nice thing to have in the lineup though for for sure yeah so you've got new you've got two new guitars um what about you guys a anybody else <laughs> no um, I don't know. johnny Johnny, I got, actually, I've got I've I've got more than two new guitars. I've got more than two. Oh. Everything everything that is in front of me, I've had I I've gotten within the last three months. And That's it's going. So let's go tit for tat. Thomas, you show what's in your hands. Dave, it out. <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is a Strat style classic, but it's like. It works well for me because again, it's 24 frets. I've got that that toppy, and um, everybody that makes these guitars is all going for the classic black and gold. And I was like, you know, even Cami's got this really cool Sir yeah. AS model, and you know, and I was like, oh damn, look at that black and gold, and you know, it's such a bling combination. So um, had to had to kind of go for that sort of spec, it, but. It's got gold frets as well, which is pretty cool. Never had it again. Never had a guitar with gold frets, but um, they're kind of somewhere between nickel and stainless steel, though. They feel kind of nice and smooth, but um, just got that extra bit of bling on it. But uh, but yeah, this is the Kiesel Delos, and um, very very cool. Really like it. It's got the um, this I think was the the new headstock with the all roasted neck. One of the early roasted uh, when they literally first start doing it. So um yeah i've got a thing for roasted neck i think i'm gonna just stick with that option for every time it's available i'm gonna i'll have the roasted option please it's like a roasted dinner can't go too far wrong mm -hmm. awesome now what's the what uh what's the thickness of of the, the back of that neck is that more ibanez like or is it thicker it's it's a thin everything i was like thin do you want to like uh what radius do you want give me the flattest 20 just give me 20 um so i know i've got a friend that lives like 10 minutes away and he's just had his delos hopefully it was delivered today um he was showing me the tracking information at like 9 a.m this morning he's like it's out for delivery he's like, um but I, I i i just play thin neck so this is the kiesel thin neck profile the kiesel thin profile is probably not quite as thin as rg gem thin it's it's very you know very a little more tricky yeah a little bit more um which at first i was like I, I was used to thin necks but now i'm really kind of used to the kiesel necks um it feels like almost a little odd going to the super super thin wizard necks of the ibanezes but um but so i, I, I particularly like the multi-piece uh necks that i do like the five piece multi necks they're they're great um but yeah so it's a thin neck and it's a 20 inch radius so it's like really flat um that's just what i'm used to i mean I, I do pick up like normal strats and stuff and can play those fine but um i just like to kind of translate the, the core stuff from guitar to guitar yeah and so like you pick it up and it's like you feel at home straight away sure i get that mm -hmm. yeah it's funny because i uh, i go through i go through phases where i like a fatter neck and then i can't play uh, all of a sudden i can't play it anymore I just can't play on it my hands get a little weird and then i go yeah. to like my the thin neck stuff and i'm like i i, I why aren't i playing these all the time and then after a while i'm like well that's not really right and i go back to like the fatter neck and i'm like oh okay that works now it's just very weird but yeah, yeah. That's, that's how i feel about it it's good to have variation mm -hmm. and um yeah cool just to have like a hitch SS never really had a, a configuration like that, you know, kind of just having two single coils and a lot of the stuff that I play, especially when I post, you know, stuff to Instagram, you know, I kind of use clean sounds a lot for those kind of things and just having the splits there's pretty cool as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. That's a great guitar. Uh, yeah, like I, one of the last videos you did on Instagram, you were using that guitar, and I was, I, I thought to myself, now oh, that's, that's, the video that's something that I don't. <laughs> if it was the last video that i did on instagram with that guitar it would have been like um the dr dre track <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta have fun man absolutely yeah you have to always 
Jay, you awake? Yeah, I was just responding to something. Oh, Instead okay. of people sending me messages in the chat room, um, because they're secret, you know. I'm yes. No, I know what you're. I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> so I'm just doing it through uh, there. Uh, uh, now you, now you went and did it. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Oh, snap. Wait, before you show that, I have to show this because you have to one up me with that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go for it. Here you go. Oh, look at that! Hey, I've got it. Um, is it the what is it? The VNK or something? This is uh, this is a seven seven V BK. BK, that's a, yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Wait, isn't My, that the Thomas McRocklin ad guitar? Yeah, you you were in an ad with this guitar. Yeah, on the bed, on the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Funny but, thing, yeah. you should mention the bed there, Thomas, because I have a, a picture. I think I have two pictures of you at a very young age. Ooh, shirtless, whoa, shirt, whoa, wait a minute. Shirtless, oh. play, playing a Kramer guitar. Oh wow! Okay, I must see that. I don't want to put it over the internet, but I will send it to you via text, and you can decide what you want to do with that. Oh, okay. You know, I think I know what it is. Um, we used to when I when I was uh, living in LA, was living in apartments, and everybody in the apartments was like going to like GIT and stuff like that. And I was always like hanging around different people's house, and a lot of people knew I was also living with Steve Vai at the time, and doing like you know crazy stuff and um yeah so i think um that'll be from a couple of buddies back in the day which i think yeah one of them i'm still in contact with on facebook um would have been around their house playing their kramers because they were kramer boys as well mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> damn yeah. so i got oh. i got those pictures i can't lie i got those pictures from uh my buddy and our friend the chad who said yeah. Yeah, that that is that's Chad. Yeah, exactly. Chad is a good friend of mine. Uh, he has a huge collection as well, doesn't he? He okay. does, and that's how uh, I'll tell you the story about how I got the uh, that snakeskin guitar. Uh, okay. He uh, he's been wanting one of my one of my Van Halen replica striped EVH uh, uh, Kramer guitars that I had, and I have yeah. I have I had a blue Wolfgang, a blue that I put together. It was a. a, a Indonesian body with with an USA neck and I just made it up. It, it looks great uh, And he has wanted those two guitars and he kept I'm like, nah, I really want to get rid of them And I certainly don't want to get rid of the Kramer yeah. uh, So I said uh, so finally my other buddy uh, Showed that he was selling these ESPs and I said and, and I said to him I called him I said I tell you what you want those two guitars I'll tell you what. buy me that snakeskin guitar and I'll send these to you and he did. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. What a cool look, story. Look what I found. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, there that's, it is. that's this guitar. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Do you still have that hat? Yeah. I think I do. I, I I was pulling some stuff like out of the loft recently and I found loads of stuff like the 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 a lot of the outfit that I had on the in the audience's listening, um, the hat and just a lot of crazy stuff like cassettes and letters you know because back then everything was fax and letters there was no internet there was no sending an email you know mad yeah that's, nuts, that's a very you. cool gem though very nice yeah, thank you i got i got a couple more things to show but uh show us that amazing guitar in your hands so yeah this is the uh the flame hey so um this is uh, one of the three flames, I think, that was made. Um, and it actually sounds really cool. It sounds great. Um, I haven't like played it in a while, but the last time I played it, it sounded good anyway. So let me see. And it, I think a gain channel is really needed, right? Well, before you play that guitar, uh, anyone who wants to know where that guitar, uh, where, where you can see that guitar, uh, other than in Thomas's hands, if you watch the... Um, the Donnington White Snake video, Donnington Live. Mm -hmm. Steve I plays that exact guitar on one song, and in the middle of the song, it goes so far out of tune that he picks up a seven string. <laughs> <laughs> because, be, because I mean, he wails on that guitar like he's yeah. doing acrobatics with that guitar in yeah. that song. So there's yeah. no if that guitar would stay in tune, that probably would be the best guitar on the planet. Yeah, it's got a great neck. That's one thing I, I noticed about it straight away. 
Uh, the neck feels great. Um, just a single pickup in there, um, but it's uh, yeah, it's got a lot of tone on it. And for something that has just so little body, it's uh, it's really cool. But um, so yeah, Steve gave me this. Uh, I know it was my, I think it was my twelfth birthday, because you know I used to, you know, when I was living with Steve, I would always be picking up his guitars. We'd finish tracking for the day. I'd be in the vault, grabbing out all the guitars, and I think he spotted me playing this one a few times. Probably um trying to pull off some of his David Lee Roth days moves and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> but nevertheless, um, he pulled it out of the vault and uh, gave it to me uh, my, uh, as a birthday present. Mm. Oh, let's uh, see how it sounds. I haven't played it in so long. So... Mm. <laughs> Actually, it's got a quite a nice rhythm sound, isn't it? I think it's a little bit lower output than the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably a that's probably a, a PAF Pro in there. Yeah, it's low output, so it's driving the amp uh, a lot less. I'm getting less distortion, but uh, cool rhythm sound though. Really yeah, nice. beautiful guitar. Cool, Can I see the back of it? I'd like to see the neck, the uh, the 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 neck joint. Like, hang on a second. Let's. Okay, so it's just a regular four bolt neck. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. cool. That's cool. Very cool guitar, and it's all red on the back. Now, I don't think that's a Joe Despagny version. I think that might be an actual performance. Like performance made it after Joe Despagny because I uh, the uh, the one that Joe Despagny made for Steve, which was the original one, mm -hmm. the bottom uh, the bottom horn right where the neck uh, meets the body. Mm -hmm. You see on how yours is like a hump there, so that the neck actually fits in the joint. Yeah. Well, Joe cut, didn't he didn't make any room. Uh, it's it's just the neck out there. So oh, okay. when Steve would use it, it would it, you know the neck would move right away because there's nothing holding it in on the right, bottom side. Right, right. So that that's that was the improvement. That that's a amazing guitar. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so you got, yeah, you got yeah. a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I worked for Joe at the time, so you know that I you know. Gotcha. I, you right. don't tell you don't tell the boss that he's doing something wrong. But I was like, what? Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite not quite right there. Yeah. That's awesome, but um, yeah, cool one for the collection, man. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know that um, Jason Becker has a guitar like that. Oh really? Mm-hmm. He he has one. Uh, yeah, I usually go over to his house on his birthdays for his birthday parties and. Oh, uh, I've, awesome. I've seen one of those on the wall and I, yeah, I think it's a performance, right? Okay. That's performer, performance. Yeah. Yeah. They're out in LA. They're a custom, custom guitar company in LA. Uh, are, they, are they still making guitars? Yeah. I called them last week. I, I wanted to, uh, Chad actually is getting a replica made of that guitar, but with the performance oh. deck, you know, from the yeah. going crazy video. So yeah. there's no, there's nowhere to find the decal anywhere, you know, to make a replica of it gotcha. so i made the phone call for him and the the guy who was very un, he hard to understand over the phone but he says no i don't give decal no decal i sell you neck no decal okay wow yeah that's great well but it's still going though so fat fat play to the guys yeah <laughs> a nice shirt by the way nerd halen <laughs> yeah yeah they're actually they're playing a special gig on my birthday for I think it, I think it's for my birthday, but I won't be there. <laughs> oh, real nice of you. Yeah, I wish I could be there, Caleb. I wish I could be there, man. It's down in uh, is it Anaheim? Maybe. How far is Anaheim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he said Anaheim. Uh, 
for me, a plane ride is like 45 minutes, but you know, driving, it's like two know, days. It's yeah. It'll take a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, Thomas, the chat is in the, uh, in the chat saying hello to you. Oh, well, awesome. Let me have a look though. That's uh <laughs> very cool. I, I, I saw a few of the chat, the chat, but, uh, He's actually here. That is amazing. Yeah. Let me roll up to the sidewalk and take a look. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Tony. Tony. Yeah. I've I've known Jason uh, for like seven, eight years or something. And actually, when I first discovered uh, you, Thomas, I discovered you and Jason at the same time in a, in a magazine article. Oh, wow. I want to say 90, 90 or 91. Okay. It was a benefit for, for Jason. Oh, yeah. Amazing gig. Amazing gig. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember where, that. Where was that? Uh, I don't know where it was, but um, what I remember about that gig is um, playing my solo on top of Zach Wilde's shoulders whilst he was drunk. And, <laughs> and I think I may have seen that. Oh, really? And, and I just, you know, my dad was like, you know, because Zach's like six foot odd, and my guitar was probably clanging off his head, <laughs> and he'd already like been hammering the uh, the uh, beers down. And I'm, I'm sure my dad thought he was just going to topple over the stage and just kill me outright, <laughs> straight up. Um, but uh, no, I survived. It was it was a great night. There was just so many amazing guitar players and stuff. And obviously, we, we all got to hang out with uh, Jason and stuff. So awesome, awesome show. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it was. Uh, I see the picture that everybody took together. Um, mm-hmm. That, that kind of pops up quite quite often. Um, and people kind of message me that on, on Instagram now and again. Um, but yeah, fun times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. a cool picture, I, I believe, with uh, you, Eddie Van Halen, and Steve Vai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. At, at the, um, that was at the Bill and Ted um, premiere. Um, because Steve, I think, did some like uh, ad libs and, you know, the kind of, you know the sort of sound effects on the guitars and stuff, and I was around when when they were tracking that stuff. Um, but yeah, that was at the Bill and Ted, um, the premiere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool, um, Bill or Ted. I just wanted to see the movie, man. You know, forget Steve and uh, Van, you know Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some popcorn and a movie. Well, you know, Steve. Steve's one thing because you're friends with him. But did you have you ever played in front of Eddie? Did you play for him at all? Um, I don't think I actually played with him, but I'd met him quite a few times. Um, and certainly, like, you know, we like I was always at the NAM show and I was always, you know, every year and and quite a lot of time, you know, that was like on the run up to when I was, you know, in California or LA a lot. Um, so I probably had run into him like five or six times. And um, I remember a couple of times, you know, and specifically at the NAM show and stuff, you know. He'd um he'd catch me and uh, run up to me and call me that little bastard and kind of ruffle my hair up and uh, <laughs> grab me and stuff and go you know, hey you little bastard and blah 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 but um it was always in the you know the the nicest possible way uh, absolutely it was great so uh, but you know because you know because I hadn't spent you know a lot of time with you know Eddie like he, like you mentioned I was kind of friends with Steve and we you know go back uh, quite a long way. Um, so, you know, seeing Eddie and stuff, you know, obviously listening to him growing up, it was always like, ah, there he is. Yeah. There he is. Very cool. But, uh, yeah, man, he's to listen to those early records so much, like, you know, cruising around in my dad's car with his sort of cassettes on, you know, this is mm-hmm. pre-80s and stuff, you know, awesome times. Because yeah, you're more of a Roth era than Sammy era, correct? We've talked yeah, about yeah. I actually, I actually did like um, a lot of the tracks with um, Sammy Hager and stuff, but um, but yeah, just those early albums, just you know, especially at that time when they just hit, and it was like just such a good balance of like cool songs, you know, so raw with amazing playing and stuff. You know, it was just like bursting with energy. You know, I've got a and I'm, I got a great question for you. And it's mm-hmm. going to be hard. I, it may be easy for you to answer. Van Halen one or Eat Him and Smile. Mm, that's a difficult one, isn't it? 
Well, you, you're more of a Skyscraper fan than Eatem and Smile, right? That is very true. I've probably played Skyscraper more than both of those put together. I don't know. There's something about Skyscraper that's just touching on the sort of keyboard side of things and the you know the playing, and it's got that cheeky, you know, the cheekiness about it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Those other two are just going to have to battle it out um, on a 50 50. But um, yeah, Skyscraper is an awesome, awesome album. Yeah, I love Skyscraper myself. Yeah. That's because, Time that's because it is this guitar. That's, yeah. Oh, there we go. The, yeah, I never did get a yellow gem. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> well, here, <laughs> let's tell you what. You, I'll give you this one, and I'll take the. <laughs> The next I'll one, one you're going to show. I'll take the next one that you show. <laughs> get, get the $100 Fender Squire out from under the gun. <laughs> Quickly, yeah. Well, That's right. all right. That's all right. As long as he signs it, I'll sell it for a million dollars, and I'll get I'll get another one of these and a universe. Thomas, get, get out your air guitar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sign your air guitar. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. That's what we need. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and it's a Kiesel. It is a Kiesel, yeah. It's one of these uh, lights up. Hey. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, that is cool, <laughs> man. That's cool. Uh, so was that shirt? Yeah. Yeah, Tessy Switch. Yeah, thank you, man. Oh, I'm just not mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave a thumbs up, everybody. Yeah. Thumbs up. Hey, Jason Wade. Jason, what's up, man? Hey, Jason. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I'm going to have to pull it out now. Oh, here whoa. we go. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All the blood just left Jay's head. Yeah. My desk is lifting up, man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, please present him so I don't have to look at you and Dave wow. anymore. Oh. There she is. So yeah. Great guitar. Great guitar. A lot of lot of lot of history. Wow. Jeez, God, man. I actually haven't I mean, you know, all the tape and stuff. These might even be I don't know if they, I don't know. I haven't changed the strings, so they might be original strings. Not really sure. But um nothing like you know the tape, everything's just as it was really from probably I guess maybe the white snakes sort or of yeah days, I guess. I think uh, I don't think he actually took that on tour with him. I think uh I think I, I know he did the video with it. He did the uh he, um Fool for your loving video with it, right? But I think when the tour came. Oh wow! Yeah, and whoever doesn't know that 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 is that guitar from the cover. Yeah, it's just Ashton. airbrushed. Right. It is. Oh, yeah. the handle is airbrushed. Man, man, that's 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 the guitar, man. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I first saw that guitar, I was like, I don't, I don't care what I have to do, I have to have one, and I never got one because they were just they were like sold out. At the stores, as soon as they as soon as they hit, you oh, couldn't really? buy one. They were all sold out. What was it like a, a dip run or something? The like dip, dip. Well, yeah, the, the uh, yes. I I had bought two black ones with green pickups, uh, yeah. but you I know, wanted I those as well. And um, I borrowed it to a friend. Lent it. I I, I, I either took it. Or I borrowed it at the time, but you know, it was one of those things where you know I I I, I let him have it for a while, but and never I, got it back. I, yeah, I never got it back. It's and it's a weird one as well because it like has my name on the headstock underneath Ibanez, so it'll stand out. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he um he disappeared with that guitar, never came back, and uh, never really heard from the dude ever since. You know, so it's like it's a black one with this with a green pickups. You know, like like that run. Yeah. Uh, but it sounded great as well. But um, but yeah, it's like I haven't had over the years many guitars go missing. But like now and again, I think like mm, just where might it be, you know? So wow, but that but is in my else. opinion the disappearing inlays. Though that's the coolest inlays ever. Yeah, I was always a huge fan of that as well. Even yeah. on like the gems and stuff, I really kind of like that. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. The only thing on, on mine back there, I don't know if you could really see it, but it 
the mirror pick guard ones. They don't have the three different colors like that. Like that's super cool. Yeah, man, you got to get a seven string kiesel now. That's it, dude. I, I can't read the uh, I, I can't play seven strings for shit, man. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, try something a little bit more. That doesn't say universe under the uh, Ivanes, right? I don't think it says anything there. No, no. Yeah, mine, mine too. See. I wonder if we, uh, Now, uh, that that doesn't have a serial number on it, does it? If it does, don't say the serial number. No, it doesn't. Well, actually, uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, so that's a prototype guitar. That's one of the yeah. first ones. That's, that's pre-production. Yeah, that's right. Mine is the 2,983rd Universe Made. Not a prototype. <laughs> Very cool, though. Yeah, it's great, man. It's what it's probably the best neck I've ever felt in my life. Yeah, th this neck front of is also um, there's just something about it. It's really thin, mm -hmm. but it does play really good. Hold that, hold that bad boy up. Let's see who's bigger, man. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, you want to go sideways? Yeah. And then, well, I think yours is thinner. <laughs> I don't know. Probably about the same back then, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that what year was that? What year is that guitar? That's going to be an '89. Okay, yeah. it's a '91. So, yeah, that's my favorite production guitar that was ever made. That thing right yeah. there, boy. That's it. Very cool. Yep. And when did he give you that? I got this um, shortly after I did the audience's listening video and the Ibanez artist rep turned up. Um, I was staying at the, I think it was the Beverly Hills Hotel because I was just dealing with the whole Interscope uh, situation about signing with those. So they, uh, they or somebody put us in the Beverly Hills Hotel gets a knock at the door the art the artist relation guy from ibanez at that time um maybe it was chris kelly at that time chris mm -hmm. kelly yeah oh uh, because we used to hang out with chris a lot um he came in and says uh, this is from steve for you and basically it was this guitar in the case when i opened it up it's like wow and it was a, a pre-release uh copy of passion and warfare the uh the album so i was like hearing that just before it kind of went out or it was just out um but yeah and i remember listening to it for the first time i was like wow because it, passion warfare at that time i mean it was a big leap in a different direction you know and it was just like pretty groundbreaking you know it was it's probably my still my favorite uh vi record of all time hmm. now yeah hands down. absolutely it's my mm -hmm. favorite like solo guitar record yeah Great record. So, um, yeah. So, 
Passion Warfare uh, on cassette, um, and this guitar. It's like, all right, <laughs> that best order some chicken wings off the menu to complete this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't spicy. get much better than that. Doesn't get much better than that. No, no, absolutely. But no, it's um, it's it's, it's you know, just holds so many memories with me now, and it's been been with me for so long. So such an awesome guitar. Yeah, man. <laughs> Very cool. That is great. That is, again. Wow. Yeah, thanks for showing that. Thanks for showing all your guitars, but that really thanks for showing that guitar. No, man. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. So, all right. What else you got? Um, I, I really, you know, I. I have my three headless main electric guitars. I've got a, a Kiesel bass, which they sent me recently because I, I you know, I, you know, any track in it's, you know, I, I have a bass player that tracks like all the main stuff, but still it's great to have something that just plugs in, has a great sound. I've been using the um, neural uh, DSP plugins a lot recently. Dark glass, man. The dark glass plugin, bang, yep. use that, this straight in my audio interface. And it just sounds great, and it's of course it's it's headless, it's a Zeus shape, um, <clears throat> and I've been working a lot with Boss um, recently as well, and um, they they've they've got some really cool new stuff coming out, and it, they work with guitars and bass, so um, that's going to be used for the <clears throat> some of the videos we're going to be shooting. Very cool. Awesome. Doesn't one of your guitars, one of your Kiesels, have um, a walnut neck? Yeah, that is um my purple one, the Zeus. <clears throat> and I What would you say like as far as feel? Um all that feels a little bit like roasted. Um it has that sort of it when I first felt it, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I like it. Mm -hmm. Um and the reason is is it's it's so fast and so like not hard, but like it it resists sweat a lot and i don't get like hot or like you know play you know with clammy hands i you know i fortunately don't have like that sweaty sort of you know, sweaty hands and stuff and if i do i just go rinse them off with cold water but walnut seems to resist like you know you, you know you, you play under lights and you're shooting videos and stuff you're gonna get hot um but it seems to resist that really nicely um just like roasted does as well so that's probably the closest thing i can compare it to but um, it's a really cool uh, feeling. I really like it. And this one's just got two um, purple heart stripes going through it. Um, it's a really cool neck. The, the five-piece necks, um, I mean, they're just so stable. They're just, you know, once they're in tune and set up and rolling good, they're, they're really good. Um, but I do like the five-piece neck. Um, I mean, I, uh, I think that's a three. Well, it's five on the base as well. Damn. Um, I, I I haven't tried a three, but I guess the threes are probably going to be you know also great as well. But but I, what I like about the fives is you can kind of feel those the texture differences. Mm -hmm. So when you're moving around, it's like it it just it makes I don't know. It's just you can kind of feel it. I first like experienced that with the Ibanez eleven piece neck uh, on one of my RGs, Jeez. and I was like everybody was like eleven piece, but when you're moving around and stuff. Um, but that thing had like Babinga and all sorts of different woods in it, but it felt, you know, like really kind of cool on the back to play. That was cool. I definitely prefer those compared mm -hmm. to like the um, the five piece necks that Ibanez did with a really thin stripes through them, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wow. you know, the, the more pieces, the, the, the more stable it is, you know, it's just, it's going to be a real stable neck. You, you might not even need a truss rod. Maybe. I mean, you know, to be fair, I mean, you know, most of my guitars arrive like, you know, really well set up from Kiesel. But a lot of the time, you know, I've had a guitar tech that lives in Newcastle. And I really kind of, he knows exactly over the years, every single Ibanez I've had, every guitar I've had, it's gone through him. He knows exactly like how I like to play him. So, so even though Kiesel set it up with like really nice low action stuff, I still probably take it to him. And um, he does like, some little alterations for the setup just just for personal taste mm -hmm. um but yeah once but once he's like done that um i, I apart from changing the strings he, he never touches them again you know so i guess yeah totally must be super stable um but they have like dual uh carbon fiber carbon fiber rods even running through them and stuff so mm -hmm. 
and I guess the, the small compact nature of them kind of maybe that, that helps a little bit. I keep going back to the roasted neck though, because <laughs> roast is so wow. cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Oh, thank you. We missed any questions here in the chat? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's go <laughs> We're back. Missing, missing all the questions. Yeah, I know. We're having a good time, man. <laughs> you know what? Let's go back. Uh, Mark Dillon, thank you very much. Yeah, I love this guitar too. Oh yeah, that's our friend Larry Mitchell's. Uh, this is guitar. Uh, Larry gave this guitar to me. Yeah. Um, you guys. Thomas got Steve Vai giving him guitars. Dave, you got Larry Mitchell giving you guitars. Well, you know, I just happen to be very with with guitars. Listen, with health, I'm not very lucky. With guitars, I'm extremely lucky. I I know how to pick a good guitar. I usually always pick a good guitar, and I get you know get beautiful gifts like this. So it's you know. So I happen I to be lucky that way. I'm joking. I would happily give you any of my guitars for your health. So I'm seeing a lot of links. Click. I don't. I don't know. If, like, click on the links because I don't know what they are. Oh, like. that's Nightbot. That's Johnny. J Johnny's actually putting those links out. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That's 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 all me, you guys. Oh okay. You're yeah. in your own chat. It's like automated. It's like pre. It's like timers. And okay, so, okay, cool. I was like, if, if I click on one of these links and it, it kill, kicks me out of this uh, chat, <laughs> what happened? What what happened? happened? <laughs> it's going to bring you to another website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a coy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so, go ahead. No, 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 you go, because I feel like I've been asking a booty load of questions. That's all right. You know, Tony Neville asked if you could play any of the Crossroad Duel. Can, can, oh, yeah. Thomas hates requests, man. You ever watch his Instagram live videos? I'm not requesting it. I'm just reading it. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I could. Um, I, I remember there, there, there was one like um, alternate like bit where it was like it was like descending, diminished or something. It was something like this, like. Um, and I, I I I can't remember it at all. It was like, it was something like that. Is that from that movie or not? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's part. It's part of that. It's part of the yeah. duel. Yeah, it's it's a weird little pattern. So sometimes I'll try and remember that and think, you know, but only because it's a weird pattern to play. Uh, not because I was trying to like learn it. So it's like that's the only bit I kind of kind of remember. So another question is uh, Jason Wade's. Uh, Jason Wade asks, what type of effect units software does Thomas use? Uh, I can probably flip the camera around and show you because I've been really spending a lot of time on that recently because. I've been using the Fractal for a long time, and I think we're at an exciting place now where the really low latency stuff is getting really cool. Um, I have literally, as far as I'm aware, every guitar amp plug-in available. Uh, and the one that I've been happy enough to kind of literally just put my default, you know, I'm playing it right now, is the Neural stuff. Um, I really like the Nameless plugin, and I really like the Plenty plugin. Um, but what I'm doing, um, I can probably grab my webcam and flip and show you guys a little bit. So my guitar setup, it goes from the guitar, obviously, down to the pedal board. And um, this Holy is... pedals. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a Donington setup. <laughs> so this is like, oh, uh, which way? That's there. So that's the pedals that's basically made it to the pedal board. Um, it's, it's crazy because like last year I had no pedals and now I've got like, just a crazy amount of pedals. Um, so I really like the precision drive in front, and sometimes I'll use like the Horizon devices. This is an awesome little pedal. You probably can't see it's a bit dark on the floor, um, but it's the uh, the Nubara Overdrive, great pedal. Um, mm -hmm. So basically all of this stuff is controlled with uh, the Boss ES8. So everything's plugged in. You can just kind of switch different combinations. So the guitar goes through that. And then it goes, um, 
turn that off so we don't get like inception uh, uh into ableton and in ableton i am using right now the plenty plugin um can you see that is that working sure yeah. mm -hmm. i'm going from the plenty plugin and i'm not really using much in there apart from just the main amp block no eq uh the cabs are disabled uh and the reverb and delays are also not in use so i'm not like i'm using the plenty for just like the amp block and then i'm using actually i have the um uh cab lab software but um it's not saved on my default project but now i'm using cab lab but this is a previous version that i've just loaded for the show um lancaster audio and this is an ir loader so i'm basically using two of my favorite brands of irs uh, the own hammer stuff and also ml labs they do some great irs and i've been using those a lot recently um so these are the cabs that i use and then you know i have a lot of even tied stuff but I'm um, using the Valhalla stuff uh, quite a bit at the moment. And these are not like expensive, the Valhalla's. They're like $50 per plugin, you know? So it's not really high end stuff. But I do use like a lot of the Eventide plugins. So that's like my entire guitar chain at the moment. Um, return back to that. Oh, that was me. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> well, you're, gonna, you're gonna change that to your desktop uh, luckily, luckily you weren't picking your nose <laughs> well, under the desk, the things like gt 1000s and the other stuff and then i kind of just bring them in and out uh as required but it's it's pretty amazing though that you can like now just get a you know a 70 80 dollar audience face and plug straight into that um mm -hmm. You can yeah. do it, you know, without the lag and latency. You need a decent computer. Yeah, well, that um, the neural DSP stuff is is phenomenal. Um, I've been, yeah, it's 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 great, man. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, they, they did. I, th I think they've 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 got it right. <laughs> um, it's it's the best feeling one so far. You know, co comparing to Fractal and Kemper and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. But you know, some of the other guys are like really, they've got some unique things going on. Um, but if I had to commit to one at this very moment in time, uh, that would be the way. But um, but I'm I'm trying to um get all my favorite stuff together and and you know, because I use like a lot of different uh, you know, like stuff that's in the H9 algorithms, you know, and all these other different plugins. I'm trying to combine it all into one. Super plugin, maybe a signature plugin. Uh, that that'll be kind of the next step. Cool, geeky stuff. Yeah, um, it's all good. Yeah, I've thrown I've thrown the uh, the nameless plugin and even the uh, NTS um, plugin and yeah. obviously the dark glass one on already mixed tracks. Just you know, put them on the DIs, and I was like, holy crap! Yeah, you know, they sounded phenomenal. Yeah, they're really good. And mm -hmm. uh, they're really cool guys as well. Uh, it's the same guy that owns uh, the Newell stuff is, you know, the Dark Glass. Yep. Uh, nice guy. So, um, yeah, they, they all seem cool. And uh, they all just seem really into it um, and quite geeky as well. I like that, you know, the kind of, the, the a lot of them within the company are really hands-on, you know, um a lot of companies putting out plugins uh they're basically like just the front end of it but behind it is like another team who they're just paying you know make it like this make it look like this and it's like this separate thing but with the neural stuff it seems like they're kind of all really into it and a lot of them are very much uh, involved with the day-to-day -day stuff as well yeah good stuff mm -hmm. where's johnny again i don't know he's always he's Sipping something. <laughs> what were you getting a tea? I'm the one that should be getting the tea. Yeah, the man. It's ten to two in the UK. Ah, oh. light. You guys are lightweights. How you doing? <laughs> you you all right? Or are you uh, another couple I'm minutes good. maybe? Or you want to split? Yeah, I'm good. I'm 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 just uh, ready to do a few push-ups in the moment. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. Well, I want to ask you. I know you do uh, guitar lessons on on Skype and stuff like that. Um, is it easy for you to kind of like gauge 
where a player is and um, and kind of know where there's you know what to show them and what to um, I guess teach them. Is it easy for you to to know that, or is it something you have to kind of like shit? I don't know what the hell to tell this person. Uh, no, no, no. I I've, w literally the first couple of licks I hear or see, I know straight. You know, pretty quick. Um, you know, in, in terms of what techniques need to be improved on, or you know, what we can do to help situations. And it's one of my favorite things to do on Skype is like not so much giving people stuff in three months time, you can do this if you do this. I, I really don't like that. And so many of the lessons go this way. It's like within 10, 50 minutes of talking, playing, get to know, you know, see what they're doing, what they want to do. And then within the first half an hour, hope most lessons, we find one or two key things that give them huge boosts immediately so and that's my favorite thing because like the you know the one hour slot by the end of it it's like often they're just kind of like almost amazed like they're able to do this thing that they weren't able to do previously just because we made a few tweaks to the way they're playing uh, and that's really like, you know, for me, that's like really satisfying to see, you know, and I like to give people like they get something, it's instant. It's something that they, they can hopefully continue to um, improve and work with, but they've gained something there and then, you know, so, but yeah, I normally can gauge like really, really quickly, um, you know, and, you know, sometimes you just get people with bad form, certain things, picking certain angles, they're trying to do something that can't get the right speed or the right technique. And it's, you know, it's, there's always one or two, elements that kind of you know you kind of see why it's 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 that hindering sort of uh, thing it's, it's blocking them um but yeah so yes <laughs> is the well, answer so what would you do for a guitar player that doesn't know much or any at all theory but mm -hmm. can play stuff if they worked at it except just they don't they know zero theory <laughs> the reasoning yeah. behind stuff they just Mm -hmm. play stuff if they learn. I mean, that, that's uh, in my opinion that's not uh, you know the end of the world i mean the only reason i want to know theory to some extent is so i can express myself and work around the neck like there's no kind of limitations so i might want to play something on the d string here the g string here and you know flow between them and not really think at the point of playing how do i make the transition <clears throat> i just uh, you know i want the theory there so the plane is just concentrating on delivering uh the the lines and stuff you know so theory for me is just like just a tool <clears throat> and i'm not thinking in theory when i'm playing um so if somebody's able to again express themselves and play everything that they they want to you know they hear a melody in, the, in their mind and they can play it without thinking about it then you know who, who really cares you know um but often the most common thing that happens in the Skype lesson is people <clears throat> find themselves um, kind of stuck in a rut a little bit and they, they they want new ways of doing new licks and, you know, they're, they're playing the same licks over and over and they just want to add a little bit of extra spice and just break away. And sometimes that does come down to just knowing the neck a little bit more in terms of theory. Um, and sometimes I think it's just a lot of people just, you know, you, you get stuck in muscle memory and it's like muscle memory is like a, it's a real killer because you, <clears throat> your fingers want to do something that are really comfortable doing. And it's like, it's a, it's a really, um, you know, we all do it. I mean, I do it. I pick a guitar and I, I go to certain keys and certain lines and stuff, but then at the same time, I'll try and play with like just three and four and practice scales like that. And then over the last year, <clears throat> I'm able to like spread my index finger to my second finger a lot more than I could like last year. Mm -hmm. And then that's um, allowed me to do loads of different kind of um, add-ons and chords that I couldn't do like last year. Um, and it's just been like a gradual thing, like just kind of getting the strength to like widen them out and stuff. So a lot of people think like, oh, your fingers are really stretchy, but like I uh, would practice certain weird things, you know, like, like two, one. <laughs> You know, kind of going like that. You know, like I couldn't really do that like a while back, but now it's not that you would play it like that, but it's like you would um, need an extension and it's just easier to do that sort of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I saw that one on your, on your Instagram live uh, last week. You did a the two finger scales and stuff like that going up and oh, down, yeah, down yeah. And fourths and stuff. Yeah, and it's like it's <clears throat> it's not that you would actually do that, but it's just like the fact that your fingers become like a little bit more. Um, they accept those kind of awkward things you demand of them, mm -hmm. and it, you know it, it kind of helps when you you come up with a lick and then the only way to complete the lick would be to phrase it in a certain way or you need extra strength in certain areas. So um, it's kind of, yeah, you know, and a lot of that stuff, you know, you can do whilst you're watching TV, you know, you just got to think a little bit differently and sort of, you know, try and come up with interest in no combinations. And then when you were doing it, I'd mentioned in the chat about do it with the no thumb challenge, just, Keep keeping the thumb off the back of the neck and just point it with your fingers. <laughs> that's hard to do. Oh yeah, if if you want to uh, if you want a wrist problem or, or finger cramps, that's that's what you do. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, because I feel like you know, I know I've been I, I said it a couple times to you about getting lessons from you, but I almost feel like if I get on camera with you, I'm just gonna be like, I can't play anything, dude. <laughs> It'll be more like entertainment instead of learning. No, no, I mean, <clears throat> I've never like had lessons or anything, and I, I'm not good in front. Like, like go, you said it earlier, like going to a guitar store, and I just like amp on low, and I, I just if I'm playing in a band or something in front of people, that's a different story. But it's just different. No, I, I, honestly, <clears throat> you'd be surprised. <clears throat> I um, when we have lessons, there's no elitist. There's no level. There's, there's none of that crap. It's literally the only thing I'm interested in is can we do something there and then to make you a better player? And that, you know, that's it. And <clears throat> people start off, and yes, you definitely the first 10 minutes, they're a bit like, oh, you know, because, you know, a lot of people haven't taken a Skype lesson before. And, you know, I, and I, and I, I don't do like five a day or anything. I, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, sometimes one every couple of days, sometimes a bunch in a week, you know, because I have to, keep doing other stuff <clears throat> but um but so many times the case like people have start off five ten minutes in like really cagey and then 10 15 minutes later they're like all of the all of the preconceptions has dropped and they're totally fine and then it's literally then down to like just improving things you know um so yeah it's 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 one of those things you probably think it's gonna be you know a certain way and then you kind of <clears throat> you overthink it <clears throat> but it's it's fine. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to hit you up soon. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like I, I've kind of um, I'm in a rut right now, and I gotta I gotta write some stuff, and um, I feel like I'm just you know I don't want to make this about me. I know you gotta go soon, and we're on a show, but no. I'm just you oh, got yeah. me pumped. <laughs> Thinking about yeah, yeah, stuff. it's 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 uh, definitely inspiring to watch you play and and talk to you and. And you know, see what you're doing on guitar. Mm, thank uh, you. It's it's just it, what an incredible thing to watch. I mean, I'm I'm being entertained right now, just you know, talking to you. It's it's amazing. Oh well, I appreciate that a lot. But it's yeah. uh, no, it's uh, it's obviously it's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. yeah, and you're always welcome. You're always well, you know, at any time. Thank you. <laughs> so as far as social media, Johnny, go ahead. <laughs> I saw you grabbing the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What's what's my website? Is that what you want to know? <laughs> Actually, in the description below, all all Thomas's links should be there. Oh, great! Thank Instagram, you. Facebook, the uh, the EP, New Beginnings EP. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think, um, I mean, <clears throat> Instagram has been like the place where I've played with the most because it's worked really well with the, the the sort of time that I've had available at times. You know, like, you know, it's like going from like practicing a lot to writing, you know, an EP and, you know, the stuff that goes with it, like the production and then, you know, just the mastering and then the, you know, just the whole thing. So Instagram has been like a great vent to like blast out some kind of licks and stuff and thankfully uh you know a lot of people seem to sort of dig those licks and stuff um but i think um longer uh content will be is, is really about to happen 
whether it's on like an education basis or just doing you know similar stuff on instagram but a little bit more in depth and stuff you know because i really kind of enjoy the kind of engagement and stuff and that's why i'm always kind of keen to jump in the comments on the instagram posts and stuff um but i think um i'll be definitely posting a lot more to youtube in, in the very near future you know i watch a lot of youtube videos and i'm sub subscribed to a huge amount of account content um so it kind of makes more sense um so i'll be doing probably more on the on the youtube so um yeah that, that that'll be fun looking forward to doing that and the plus it's a different pace you know like my instagram account it's like it's like rapid it's like three to ten second videos and it's like they're just kind of designed to be attention grabbing videos that kind of draw you in for a, a few minutes of entertainment but i think having a longer sort of form of videos like for youtube it just allows you to approach it at a kind of more relaxed pace as well <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. I'm not trying to rip people's faces off with crazy or licks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think, I think it's it's turned into a lot of that, and um, you know, it was fun for a while watching a lot of that stuff. But I feel like now, um, I'm skipping past more of that, and you know, watching the uh, you know the cami yeah. beads and stuff like that, and, and obviously you, because there's mm -hmm. there's more than just the speed and the shred aspect. It's melody and feel, especially the mm -hmm. way you play a guitar. You know you attack that thing and you put a lot into it and there's dynamics and playing. I see a lot of guys, I'm not going to name any names of course, but they're very, you know, obviously they're, they're great guitar players, but it's, it's a lot of the, you know, minimal movements and playing a guitar. Like it's a, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Like baby. And I'm like, you know, yeah, get that thing. Yeah. Man. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with you on that one. You know, I, I love to dig into the guitar when I'm playing. Um, and a lot of the tone comes from that, you know, kind of playing hard. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, completely with you uh, again. And I, I think, you know, also just, you know, kind of touching what you said before, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've posted, you know, has kind of been like crazy licks and stuff, but um, I've been varying it a lot recently and trying giving people some value and kind of you know swinging by you know the the mcrockland instagram account and stuff and you know you know the the last post that i posted apart from today's one it was like a minor in chords and a lot of the guys that follow me would be like quite advanced you know and it's like it's a pretty simple thing but that's something that i learned as a kid and if i can you know make a post in just a couple of minutes and you know give people value and some you know guys who've been playing like two or three months you know a lot of comments on there are like you know they really kind of seem to be uh, quite pleased that i also post something that's like aimed specifically at guys who've been playing a short while but you know it's something that i found useful and used a lot throughout my life you know um so I'm kind of posting a little bit more of that, well quite a lot of that sort of stuff um just you know simple but effective and useful sort of stuff for all levels of players but especially useful for guys who's just kind of at that stage where you know they're easily gonna soak up something or just go in the wrong direction and so kind of like uh, mixing up a little bit i think that's that's been a quite enjoyable thing to do mm -hmm. yeah that's that's cool that's the way to do it yeah. simples mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. johnny started the show beat red like he was in the sun for three days and now he's now he's on the moon <laughs> yeah yeah i told you guys my lighting is terrible here it's it's awful <laughs> um, so and now i'm gonna look like i've been in the sun because i'm laughing uh-huh actually your internet is like really weird so it's you're going you're, crappy you're, right now you're you're all fuzzy you're kind of like uh <laughs> oh no <laughs> is this is it still crappy i don't know okay. to me it is it might be me i don't know it's not you it's me uh -huh. i'm just looking at your face and i'm playing some chords so i'm gonna today on the Johnny Bean Show. You 
You know what's funny, dude? Man. Every every time you start playing, I look at the thumbnails on the bottom of the screen and I see Johnny smiling, I see Dave smiling, and I'm smiling because it's like it's just <laughs> it's great, man. It's it's I awesome. just I just love watching his fingers. It's just like it's it's effortless. Absolutely effortless to, to what you're you know. I know it takes a lot of practice and and some natural Especially. ability. As also natural ability, but mm -hmm. My God, I mean, I've seen people play for 40 years or more or more, and I've seen celebrities that are, you know, that are, you know, that play all the time. And it's, man, nothing like they got nothing on you. Oh, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I just flipped your screen and see you've got another killer guitar that's like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. I built this one. <laughs> this one I built. <laughs> like, where did that come from? <laughs> Look at that. You built it. Yeah. I, I build I build guitars. Yeah, it's, it's speaking of the of, moon, one of the things that I do. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the moon guitar. Look at that. Oh yeah, that is very cool. Two springs, like me, baby. I use two springs as well. Yeah, two springs, and the Floyd is not uh, on this on this guitar. The Floyd is not floating. Mm -hmm. on, on the Van Halen style guitars, they they're right against the body, gotcha. so you can only only go downward. It goes down. Yep. <laughs> And it's a, a thicker body. This is a mahogany <laughs> body. It's two inches thick. Dave's yeah. only goes down. <laughs> but it sounds like uh, what? What does it sound like with that? Does that like have a certain characteristic? It's uh, well, I don't know if you would be able to hear this right, but I mean, it's just, it sounds great. <laughs> I'm not going to play the rest of it, Johnny. Don't worry. It's, it's very cool. In very here, cool. It's, and it's only with a little practice amp, it sounds godly. Sounds big. Yeah, it yeah. sounds huge. Big guitar. Just maple neck. I see. Yeah. I, I will give a plug. Chris Locke guitars made the body and the neck and i i put it together pariah pickups and this floyd is a a real old uh pre-production 1983 floyd nice that's awesome man yeah very cool that is cool the crop very cool. Awesome. <laughs> so well, what's, uh, what's your next project johnny johnny i'm looking at you on the screen that's why i said that <laughs> my next project is to hit the stop button <laughs> <laughs> mm. um i mean i i know it's it's been it's it's exactly uh two hours mm -hmm. so and i'm starting i'm starting to feel bad <laughs> yeah it, it it is uh it's almost bedtime yeah so <laughs> where's the crying button on here do we have one oh no 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 <laughs> that's not it uh huh. Right. So, uh, everybody, leave a thumbs up. And Thomas, his links are all in the, in the description. Right down there, you got his Instagram, you got his Facebook, you have his his EP. Yeah, and uh, if you want to subscribe to the. Uh... McRockland YouTube channel that would be awesome as well. That'd be very nice. Mm -hmm. YouTube.com forward slash McRockland. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be in the in the description as well. Thank you. So all right. Yeah, again, Thomas, thank you so much. I really we all really appreciate you coming on and and, and giving your time like this. It's Absolutely, man. That was really my pleasure, guys. It's uh, it's good to meet up with you guys again. So thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I'm gonna sign off and uh, get myself to bed. But uh, like I say, man, it's been uh, it's been good to catch up with everybody and glad to see uh, everybody's doing well. Yeah, man. And happy birthday, Johnny Bean. Happy birthday. Thank you. Have a, yes. good one. a couple hours from from now, it'll be your birthday, bro. Well, for me, several. But... I just broed you, by the way. Just broed you. What? What's I that? just called you bro. Broed you. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna. Okay. Now, Sam, bro. 
All we right. blow Thomas, them. let's let Thomas go. Let's let him go. Thomas, <laughs> thank you so much for the for the birthday, uh, the happy birthday on the guitar, <laughs> man. Thank you, thank you so much for that. It's uh, yeah, a few bum notes in there, but uh, hopefully it'll not reflect on your actual day. Nah, it's all good. It's awesome. All, good. all right, guys, uh, have a good one, and uh, thanks again for having me, man. Take it easy, everybody, thank and you. thanks for everybody thank you, for tuning in. Take care, Thomas. All right, all right. bye, guys. See you, man. See you, guys. Anybody that has one of these out there, hit it. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, he's great, man. Great dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now what? <laughs> now what? I know we're oh, all, parts. We're normally just it's just one hour into the show now, so <laughs> we we can go another hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we? <laughs> um, but hey, I encourage everybody to stay here. I mean, as long as we're here, stay here. But if, if you're heading out to some other show, some other channel somewhere, make sure to tell them in the chat that you were just watching Thomas McRocklin over on Johnny Bean TV. And uh, leave a thumbs up. But don't leave here. Yeah. Yeah, don't leave. We're just saying if you're going to leave. But you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Yeah, you know, I've been... Uh wanting to get lessons from him but i just you know there's that weird part of me that feels like as soon as that camera turns on boy i'm just gonna be like wait am i left-handed now or something because i can't play righty at all you know? is this a bass <laughs> is this a 30 string guitar because i have no idea what i'm looking at uh, where are my pants <laughs> i'm wearing them as a shirt <laughs> uh joe hervey wants to hear a metal riff oh, yeah uh, now, now we'll answer all your questions <laughs> let's see does he want to hear fight fire with fire oh almost almost is what we want what <laughs> did that come through at all my god yeah that's some fast right handing. Yeah, man. <laughs> wow. You must take like 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm a lefty though, so it doesn't translate well. Well, let's see if you can see it. Hold on. Let's see. Whoa, whoa. And you know, the tricky thing is too, when you're playing on the E, I still have that low B in the way, so you have to really, really tighten up. There's not much, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fight fire with wah pedals. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Dang. That wah sounds great. That, and, and I know that's the Steve Vai wah, and I, I know I don't normally care for it, but it sounded great. It does, man. It really does. The only the only negative thing is it is the um, – oh, what the hell is it called? More. A wah pedal where <laughs> – what, what? Now what? I said – you said the only negative thing is that it's uh, Morley. I said Morley. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll, I'll pick it up. And show you what it, hold on let me turn my amp off it's so this is the wah pedal right it's the bad horsey two so it has the contour wah which i leave off but it also has a gain knob which just adds a little more oomph to it and i i leave that cranked man because it, it it allows as soon as you hit that wah on it really gives you a, a super big uh sweep um but anyway so what is this called when a contour wah, I think. A hair. So obviously with a regular wah, you know, you can move it wherever and it'll stay, which I guess is a benefit of a regular wah. This one, 
you have to leave your foot on. So right now it'll be off, obviously. And the second your foot hits it, it turns on. But the only negative thing I think is sometimes it's cool to have that, you know, heel down, you know, yeah, and just leave it on. With this, it's it's tricky. You have to like find a sweet spot with your foot and leave it there. And it's kind of uh... <laughs> the Chad. Chad, no, none Chad. of that tonight. None of that. So, it, but it, the, the wah does sound great. It really does. But you can get those Steve Vai effects when you're just like, if you're standing up, just wow, wow, wow. It quickly, well, yeah. Right. Yeah, and Chad, I sent those pictures you sent me to Thomas. You know, so all you got to do is with the... You can probably hear the floor more than the damn wah pedal, but... You do, but when, when the app is turned up loud. Yeah, awesome. that's cool. Wow. That's very cool. Uh, I would imagine if you did that all the time like Steve does, you'd be breaking a lot of wahs. Yeah, probably. And they won't send them to me like they do him, you know. Mm -hmm. Boner jams. Thank you, man. He's got a question for you, Jay. Who does? Boner jams. If he has a question for me, he can just call me and ask me. He can send it in a guitar box. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he's picking one up tomorrow. Oh, that's actually. so funny. He's picking one up tomorrow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Hannon, can you please give us an update on the upcoming Metallica album? We love you, and you look like crap tonight. Thank you. Um, it'll be out in October, and I still have uh, two solos to write, and one of them I have no idea what to do. Man. Yeah, because the solo is in, or the section it's in, the time signature is, I think, five five over nine. Um, and there's weird no uh, note choices in the rhythm guitar part. And it's one of those things where, like, the key changes because the notes are so odd. And it's just, it's so nuts where I'm just like, anything I do sounds out of key, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, then you just call it jazz. Yeah. Oh, I meant to do that. I meant to hit that note. This is my. This is our jazz song, you guys. Do it twice. I meant to hit that note that sounds like. <laughs> uh, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. I'll just hit the record button, and I'll just you know. There it is. Play bar. <laughs> hmm. And then to make everybody know that I meant to do that, I'll do this at the end of it. Yeah. You do your own applause through your guitar after every yeah. song. That's very funny. That way it sounds like there's actually people there. <laughs> <laughs> and then every time you, wa you walk past the mirror after you get out of the shower, you play this. <laughs> But then everybody, after they hear the solo, they'll do this. Oh. And after you try playing the solo for, uh, you know, 12 or 13 takes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tube Tupio says, oh, great. Now I want to buy that wah pedal. Dude, you won't, you won't be disappointed, man. You really won't. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say how excited I was when Thomas brought out the universe, man, because like that guitar is, you know, besides obviously the 5150, um, you know, seeing that thing, the universe is like, holy crap, you know? I agree. That and the flame guitar that just, you know, brings back amazing memories, first of all. Both those guitars were like, I mean, I know, I you know, I know he's he's got the Kiesel the Kiesel deal, mm -hmm. and uh, and he and those are great. He they he makes any he makes everything sound great, but those two iconic guitars, the fact that he, oh my god, they're I don't even have words. They're just so cool. Mm hmm. I know, I know. I I was shocked when I realized what I was looking at that guitar. 
Yeah. You know, the one from the, from that the album cover and like the one you Jay, you kept showing us like the back of that book. The one with the, with the the airbrushed uh Oh yeah. Monkey well, I should actually show, I should have showed this side because that it's bigger. <laughs> it's bigger than this one. But it's more detailed on the back. But yeah, they airbrushed you know, this is before Photoshop and everything, but they, and he was right. Dave, Steve was pissed when they put the tiger claw in there or the oh, hand. Yeah. The you know, Joe, grip. Joe just, I was there, I was there for that. And Steve was not happy. Uh, Joe was like, well, it's a gem. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a grip in it. And, and when Steve saw the guitar, he went from a smile to like, he was like the, you know, he was mad. He was, he was very angry. Yeah. So, but yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, but he ended up using it. It's it's in it's in the full free eleven video with the with monkey grip in it. And was the reason they airbrushed it because of he didn't want because he didn't want he didn't want that on that guitar, and you know also it, Steve has an airbrush he Steve has a monkey grip in one. Why isn't the one I'm buying have a monkey grip in it? Mm. You know, that's really why. I mean, they did a better job than NASA did with the original moon photos covering stuff up. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, we'll go back and look at the high resolution original moon photos, and you could see them. They air NASA airbrushed a buttload of stuff out. I mean, this you can't tell, man. Yeah, yeah. You really can't tell. Yeah. Boner Jam says soon he'll need my help finding a universe. Which will dampen the largest of panties. Well, <laughs> oh look, hold on, Bonnie Jams, Panty, you, right for there, you there. for you and myself because I think uh, I think the, there might be a deal happening. Maybe we'll see what happens somewhere down the line. Maybe somewhere down the line because uh, I'm looking kind kind of looking for one myself. But you you you'll be the first one. You'll get the first one. I, I thought I sent a, a photo to Jadis to uh, to show you. Yeah, he liked I it. I mean, it's not it's not one of the the Darren Johansson ones, but it's so hard to find to find you know you know one of the ones that Darren did. Uh, and you know even even the uh, the twenty fifth anniversary ones are amazing too, and you can't find those anywhere either. You know, you can only find. The, you know the the bubblegum colored ones for the the 30th anniversary no, no, no. the black and silver or the uh the yeah. pink, blue and i don't know what the color yeah I, i've never seen one of the 25th i don't uh, really like those i don't really like them and i don't like the way they feel either they're just not, they feel like toys um i i played one uh pretty recently and it looked great, but it was just no, it wasn't it? Just was not a good guitar. But um, the uh, 25th anniversary Passion and Warfare colors, you know, the 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 green, yellow, pink, and black. Those all came out beautiful, beautiful looking. And all the ones that Darren did back in '90 and '91, those were incredible as well. But you know, in between there, Ibanez thought that they could learn how to do it for cheaper in-house and they are not pretty looking hey john bulware john john bulware hey man hey i did a video uh earlier today and i showed the pictures of your bases Johnny wants 15%. Um, he has in this uh, tab book, uh, he has a breakdown of his equipment. The conglomeration of equipment used on the album could choke an elephant. That's what he says. So he used seven different Marshall 100 watt heads total, all modded by Jose Arandado. Yeah. Excuse me if I said that wrong. He, he's the one that did Eddie's amps. Yeah. He did, he did everyone's amps. George Lynch, everybody. Wow. If you get a Jose modded, modded Marshall, you've got a great amp. Um, Carvin preamp, Rockman stereo rack mount preamp, ADA preamp. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's loaded. 
I'll go over the uh, the guitars real quick. Three Ibanez Universe seven strings, a black, white, and psycho colored. On the tune Liberty, the black seven string universe was used on all distorted sounds such as melodies and harmonizer. Gem seven, a gem 77, and a gem 777. He used the BC Rich double neck, uh, a Tom Anderson custom guitar, a Charvel Green Meanie, um, a Guild 12 and six string acoustics on the tune Liberty. Um, I mean, there's just a, so much stuff, man. Eventide harmonizers, Yamaha delays, TC electronic chorus. I mean, there's so much stuff, man. It's amazing the, the difference in recording then and now. I mean, nowadays, most, especially, you know, obviously if Steve Vai's recording, he's going to use whatever he wants to use. But like the modern guitar player in a modern studio nowadays, a lot of this stuff is going to be, as far as effects, are going to be handled with plugins and stuff like that because it's just everything's right there. Yeah, in the yeah. Box, then it was all hands on. You know. Yeah. Then yeah. Then it was like you know nowadays you know you record the the, the DI of a guitar and you could reamp it later. Oh, you know what? I don't like how that sounds. We're going to use a different amp. Or you know the delay setting was off a little bit. Well, you can adjust that. Back then, what you put on tape was what you put on tape. Exactly. And I really, you know, that that it took it, you know, uh, took talent to play mm -hmm. play back then. Now, now, not so much. You don't need you don't need much talent. But man, Thomas, holy Christ, that is just his fingers, man. If I could have his fingers, I'd cut mine right off. I know, man. So I'm saying, like, how good was that analogy of, of an, um, the Matrix, you know? And he's like, everything gets uploaded and he knows it all. It's like, I know Kung Dude, I can play like Thomas McCracklin all of a sudden. It'd be great. Yeah. So what else we got? Anyone have any questions for us? Any uh... – It's uh, we're, we're going on two and a half hours. I think when Johnny comes back, maybe uh... – Jasco Plumbing asks, is anyone here going to the Vi Masterclass this, tum this summer in Long Island? He will be there. I'm not going. Where is this? In Long Island. So near you, I guess, right? Oh, yeah, in my town, yeah. It's uh, August, uh, oh, it's J July 28th or 29th till August 3rd. Isn't uh, Larry Mitchell going to be there? Yeah. Yeah, Larry, uh, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, uh, Devin Townsend. Petrucci or no? No Petrucci, but I think I think Andy Timmons will be there. Um, and some other people. Mm -hmm. But you know the uh, the uh, just because of Satriani, the there's going to be so much security there. I'm I'm hoping to be able to go, but I don't think I'll be able to go. I just don't think so. I think it's going to be very tight. If you didn't pay, you're not going. You don't think Larry could pull some strings for you? I already asked him, and he said he told me that we'll see what happens, but it might be very tough. Can't make any promises. Yeah, yeah he, and I wouldn't want him to make any promises because I don't want him to, you know, I don't want Steve to not invite him back. Yeah. Some Dave dude wrote, I love this photo of Jay. What what picture? What photo is he talking about? I have no idea. I hope it's something funny. But not with my pants off. That would be very funny. It would be. I remember buying this book and thinking, I'll be able to play that stuff. And then you look at it and you're like, what? Yeah, it's hard to I mean, it's hard. I can't even fathom playing it. I mean, I might be able to pull some of it off by ear, but I couldn't read that. No. I mean, there's there are things out there um, guitar-wise, you know, as far as licks that sound harder than they than they actually are to play. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's Steve Vai where it's like, you know, if it sounds hard, it probably is hard. Yeah. Well, I you know, I, I believe that Steve finds – 
licks that are easy to play in certain areas, and he finds the hardest way to play them. Brian Stewart says, is it, is it tabs? I said, yes, I can't read music. So I'll just show you. Um, the audience is listening. I love the uh, the whammy bars. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. shows the bar just going nuts. Um, here it is. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Is it on the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so and funny. It shows, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Isn't that a little laugh? Yeah, that part. And then it goes all the way to the top there. <laughs> and then here's the crazy finger picking um which we'll call a polyrhythmic part that is just it's one of those parts that you almost can't wrap your head around the timing of it. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Finger style with clean tone. Hmm. You're getting out of control, boys. Stevie, now calm down, class. Calm down. Mr. Vi, you, you've got to turn it down. What did you say? You want me to turn it down? You mean down like this? Yeah. It's great, man. Chad said he did the Vi Academy two years ago in the Palm Springs area. Amazing event. Did you ever get did you get to play any of Steve's guitars while you were there, Chad? This one's funny. Alien Water Kiss. Uh, it says, editor's note, since this entire tune is processed sounds, Steve requested that Dave Whitehill create this artistic artistic rendering in place of a transcription. Well, I got to tell you, that's the worst song on the record. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I take it off all my guitar playlists and stuff. But it's just, you know, mm -hmm. it's pretty funny, though, that they actually That is it. very funny. You know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the fish. There's a fish there. A fish and a heart. Am I on it? Yeah. Is it the one right here or is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh yeah, I do see it. Yep. <laughs> it's great, man. Very right, funny. Yep. Uh Chad says he didn't get to play any Steve's guitars, but he got to play on stage room. That's cool. Yeah. I'd poop my pants, man. I played on, on stage with Steve. You saw the pictures. Mm-hmm. I did. That was back in the uh, in the uh, uh, actually, the first time I played with Steve. I it was the during the skyscraper area uh, um, that era. I believe he was playing. What guitar was he playing? I think he was playing a yellow gem the first time. I think he was playing a yellow gem. Vista Light asks, does EVH ever do clinics, camps, or seminars? No. When was the last time he did anything like that? Who? Eddie. I don't think Eddie has ever played a clinic other than at NAM. Yeah. It, the only th the only thing you'd see him doing back then is like jam with other people every once in a while. But as yeah. far as anything like this. Yeah. Or if he was good. showing off a new, like, you know, the, the PV Wolfgang or, you know, the EVH stuff, the, the, the Frankenstein, he'd talk about it and play it a little bit. But uh, he won't do it. He's he's a rec recluse. He doesn't want to go out. He doesn't go out at all. Because if he went out, the world would stop, honestly. And that's just being very honest. I, I was told that Eddie wanted to go to the NAM show last year. Mm -hmm. And everyone, uh, the, uh, the EVH people said, no, don't. Because, because not only would it disrupt the EVH booth, it would disrupt the NAM show. And Eddie was, from what I was told, was upset but understood. Jasco Plumbing, which book is that? It's just The, the Passion of Warfare. Um book you buy this book then you realize how bad you suck at guitar that's what that's what happens but it's got cool pictures in it in the beginning it's got a little uh a uh, couple page background mm -hmm. um 
of all the stuff. Talks about touring and talks about doing the album and all that, all that stuff. It's really cool, man. Even if you, you know, don't want to learn how to play his songs, just the first handful of pages, it's worth it. <laughs> Boner jams. Seven over eight. I'll go to the Nam show and share my twin bed. Lots of spooning and crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh man. Yeah, I think we're gonna go in January. Cool. Johnny's gotta hurry up back because I gotta go. I gotta go too. So what, what do you say, what do you say we go? We both leave right now, and <laughs> when he comes back, we'll be like, what 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 happened? <laughs> Video stop. He's got to take care of his puppy. Yeah. Um, and understand. understand. Well, again, before I guess before we split, we just want to again say thank you to Thomas because that is uh, he's he's just great all around. Great yeah. guy. Absolutely fantastic guitar player. Great stories. Uh, always positive. Chad, mm -hmm. I'll probably talk to you sometime tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching it. Really cool. Um, I, I say when Johnny comes back, we just tell him, both tell him to, to end. <clears throat> when he gets back on, let's just both click the close window. You think? Leave, leave him. <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? I heard some of that. Oh, we were cursing up a storm, man. Oh. Yeah, Howie had to go out, and then he had to go out again. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But I think uh, uh, Jay and I both think that, it, that we should uh, – we should all be good at the moment. Mm -hmm. oh, I was good 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So let's let's say good night, shall we? All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, join us tomorrow, Saturday Night Live, with John BL and Michael Smith, maybe. Well, since it's your birthday, I'm not going to come on. <laughs> yeah, the big birthday show. Yeah, that's right. Everybody, cool. everybody that's in here now, come back tomorrow night. It's Johnny's birthday. Yeah, wish him a happy birthday. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th thanks again. Thanks again. Um, I I've already gotten a few presents already. Um, oh, how we left them outside for you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to. I have to clean them up. Um, I saw that buttons left you a present. Mm -hmm. a video yesterday. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Really? I don't know. But hey, thank you again. Thank you again, John Parson. He uh, sent these in. <laughs> yeah i'll be oh my goodness i'll be wearing these tomorrow night john thank you thanks you again man and charles green sent me a nice gift this morning in my in my email box thank you that oh and this <laughs> i guess i'll be doing an, an unboxing tomorrow this was sent in. It says don't open till saturday can I show those addresses? Yeah, I can. So look for this tomorrow. Cool. All right. All right. Train's leaving, you guys. Got to go. See ya. So <laughs> we'll see you guys. And remember, McRockland is, uh, is uh, in the description. Click his link. Some of the Nightbot links were, were stuck together. So I don't know what happened there, but down below. There you Stuff go. Together like the pages of this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody down below. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday, everybody down below. <laughs> okay. And when you're done, Jay down below. Uh, and then me. No. <laughs> Yuck. Gross. Wait. Wait. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> that's the Discord. Oh, that's not it either. Wait a second. Oh, come on.
Tony? Oh, that, that's it. Tony? Tony Neville? You guys, check out Tony. Check out his video. He, he uh, posted a video. He, he, he collects guitar picks. He got a Gizmachi guitar pick and a, a Mayfire guitar pick. Yeah, that's cool, Tony. I don't. Do you have Do you have that guitar pick, the Mayfire one that he showed? I need to get one of these. Oh, there goes your email address. Oh, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make that the thumbnail, John. <laughs> You're still on AOL. So am I, man. <laughs> they made me get rid of mine. When you leave AOL, they don't let you keep your your AOL uh, original screen name or anything. So when when I had to go back and jump onto AOL Messenger, you know, a couple years later, it had to be Johnny Bean, you know, one or something. It couldn't be my my name anymore. Because they, they take it. They take it away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, like, see there? I don't know if, if that might all be stuck together. I don't know. Tony right. Neville, send me your uh, send me your address on Facebook. And I'll, uh, I'll send you a couple of these pics. Mm -hmm. All right, Ben. <laughs> yeah gotta go all right all right we're leaving leave a thumbs up and like i said if you're gonna go anywhere else which why would you make sure to say you just watched mcrockland on johnny bean tv with david nuzzle and jay hannon and, and johnny bean and johnny bean and jonathan mancuda and john beale 5150 and steve anderson and michael what? smith and everyone caleb and Rapp howie and caleb and Rapp 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 nerd halen show tomorrow night they're daily. They're daily. Tomorrow night. The big giant bean birthday show. I wish I could be there for that, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Tessie Switch. <laughs> and Tessie Switch. Right there. All right. All right. I'm leaving. Somebody say bye. See ya. Beth.